Hello everybody, welcome to Resonance Arcade. We're really, really sorry about the technical difficulties. No idea what's going on there. Um, not enough preparation, obviously, as always. I am Spike, Chris, Bid the Dog, whatever you want to call me. Um, today we're going to be talking about bosses and boss fights, and we are joined by Sam. Hello. Steve. Hello. And Lewis. Hello. Three of my bestest friends in the world. Right, so um, yeah, I've been faffing around with technical stuff for the last uh, ten minutes, so I haven't, I haven't even read the intros and what we're supposed to be doing this time round. So um, yeah, uh, uh, first of all, just a quick, um, a quick reminder to everybody: we do swear a little bit on this show. So if you are easily offended, fuck off. Um, you swear. I swear. I swear, and I, I don't care. <laughs> um, yeah, so today we're, t we're going to be talking about bosses and boss fights. Uh, we have got a number of uh, a, a number of quite interesting ones that we've uh, we've had a go at. We've been putting in a document and having a quick chat between us. I think everyone's quite excited about it. Um, you know what? Along with all of the technical difficulties, there's also children that have just decided to start screaming outside my window. So I'm going to go and close my window. And I'm go, and stab them. <laughs> go and stab them. Go and stab them. Yeah. Well, no, no, they're not. They're the real children, though. That's the problem. <laughs> um, right. So I'm going to start with Lou then. Um, I, in fact, we did a show a while back, um, the first show, in fact, and we we introduced ourselves, but we didn't. We haven't actually got that on the YouTube channel now because, unfortunately, my mic was cutting out. All the sound was terrible, and and everything just went even worse than today. No, not worse than today. Today's possibly the worst. So I'm going to let Lou introduce himself, um, and then Steve, and then Sam, and I'll be back in one second. Okay. Um, I am Lewis Lane. Uh, you can apply any Superman jokes you want to that. Um, I'm an indie game developer who hasn't released a title yet. Um, I'm also a bit of a a game breaker, I guess I call it. I like to. Um, I'm the guy who's normally climbing up the wrong side of a mountain in an RPG, uh, trying to get to the top, and usually succeed at it. Um, but and I, lo I love games. But fail at everything else. Yeah. But as long as I can climb mountains the wrong way, that's fine by me. Yeah. So stay. Go on. Give us. Give us your spiel. Uh, I introduced myself last week, but I can do it again. Go on. Well, on the second episode. Um, <coughs> I'm, still, uh, I'm a, well, a, a game enthusiast, I think it's probably the best way to describe me. Um, pretty much into every genre. I've um, been playing games since a very young age, uh, four-year-old, possibly five. Um, I don't think there's an awful lot to say about that. More than that, yeah. Cool. Sam? Hello, uh, my name's Sam Collins. I'm, yeah, definitely a gaming enthusiast. Uh, the only thing I've ever developed is, you know, a slight sort of disdain for humanity. Never <laughs> developed anything like a game. You're in good company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, just been playing games mainly on console since I was about, I think, uh, six or seven, something like that. And I, yep, yeah, I'm Chris. I uh, I am uh, a game gamer, game developer, um, everything else as well musician and other things do try but um yeah i'm uh, currently developing a computer game called uh subnet it's a linux mac and pc title uh hopefully will come out on consoles at some point if uh, if it's viable and uh, it's a hacking stealth and parkour game and that's it uh We'll move on. We'll, we'll, we will get better at these intros as it goes on. <laughs> we will get them more concise and less uh, gratuitous and, and flappy, um, hopefully, anyway. And Lou's doing a good job of editing as well, so we can uh, throw the edits up on YouTube. So, yes, um, the format of our show is basically we we kind of we have a subject and then we, we talk about that for two hours and we try and structure it in some way. Last time it was actually quite structured, I think. We got to yeah. a, a decent point. It wasn't too much babbling like I'm doing at the moment. Um, but what we what we first start off with is what have you been playing this week? So again, we'll go with Sam. Uh, we'll go backwards this time. What have you been up to this week? Or um, The only new game I've been playing this week is a game that you probably have all heard of called Spec Ops The Line. Yeah, yeah. I haven't um, played it though. I don't really know what it's about. It's it's interesting. It's one of those games that um, it's one of those games that they sort of talk about pushing the boundaries of what the narrative can be in a game. The gameplay it's just, it's an over the shoulder third person shooter, and you're you know you're a, a hardened soldier, and you go to Dubai, and it's been overrun by these ridiculous sandstorms. So the setting's really cool. Like 
you're going around skyscrapers and there's all sandstorms everywhere but it's all about what the what what how you see sort of war and the sort of things that you'll do in a game casually as a game player and then it's like but it reflects on the characters how that like you know dropping white phosphorus on innocent people stuff like that is like the impact that is actually done i've not completed it yet i've got a feeling that the full the full brunt of that idea is going to hit you when you complete the game but it's already doing things like dropping sly little hints that it's breaking the fourth wall a little bit with me and sort of saying that the game sort of knows that i'm here and that i'm not a real soldier and that i'm detached from it all and yeah it's quite interesting the gameplay itself is a bit generic but the the themes and the story to it are really quite interesting. Is it a fairly old game now? Is it a couple of years? Um, I, w- I think 2012, but I could be wrong. Maybe 2013. So no, it's pretty new. I do remember there being a fair big fuss when it came out. I, I it's, mm. I mean, it, I didn't really pick it up because at the time I was like, no, I'm not ever going to play a shooter again. I've had enough of of COD and you know all them them kind of games. Yeah, I know, it's, I know it's not like that as you said, but it's. Yeah. It is a bit like that, but then deliberately says like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Sort of thing <laughs> as you're doing it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So is that all you've all you've, the new games you've been playing? Yeah. The only new game I've not had that much time. I'm sort of moving house and stuff. You know yeah. what I, mean? I think we're all in the same boat. Everything is really slow at the moment with it being summer holidays in England. It's uh, everyone's trying to squeeze in holidays. Everyone's trying to do things while the sun's out, etc. Uh, Steve, then, what have you been up to this week? <coughs> well, much in the same vein as everyone else, I think. Uh, quite busy this week doing a bit of decorating, but on a gaming front. Um, I've been playing quite a bit of The, the Witcher, uh, the Enhanced Edition. Yeah, I got, um, that, I got that a few weeks back. Um, I think it was on a... Was it a Humble Sale or something? It was. On I think it was on a Humble Sale, yeah. A Steam Sale or something. Uh, it was recommended to me by a friend, and uh, I I had played um, I I'd played it previously when it first came out, but I'd give it about five minutes and kind of lost interest with it. Mm. Uh, but there's a series of novels that goes with it as well by um, the Polish guy uh, Andrzej Sapowski or something along those lines. Um, it's a third-person kind of action RPG um, where you play uh, Geralt of Riviera, a witcher who is a a, a person who was abducted as a child and basically fed lots of poisons and mutagens and the ones that survive go on, <laughs> which is quite harsh <laughs> um, and your job basically is to go around um, trying to get commissions uh, to defeat enemies well like evil things you know um, like chimeras dragon you know like the obvious mythological kind of beasts that roam around in ye olde times mm. um, <clears throat> quite a lot of uh, attention well there's quite in order to develop your skills you have to make portions and um, certain mutagens in order to make portions of mutagens you've got to collect quite a lot of um, natural herbs and ingredients but also quite a lot of alcohol right so getting drunk is uh, is one of the mainstays of the game really and also um, <laughs> sleeping around pitch, as well yeah. well <laughs> boom boom yeah um, Every time that you uh, have relations with uh, a young lady as well, you get a trading card. Yay! So, <laughs> just like real life. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. like in real life. <laughs> so the more women you sleep with, the more trading cards you get. Uh, but you haven't got to worry about, um, about childbirth or contraception because witches are actually sterile. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, it's quite open-ended in the sense where you can make decisions that do have an effect later on in the game. And from what I understand these decisions that you make, even the first Witcher, will have effects in the second and the third as well when it comes out. Um, I've, I've actually got all of them as well. Um, well, I've got the first two. And I played the intro to The Witcher, the enhanced edition that you're talking about. Yeah. I've played 41 minutes of it. I just brought up Steam and covered all your faces, unfortunately, for a second. <laughs> covered faces even more Steam. professional. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I, I did 41 minutes and I just kind of went, uh, not sure I like the gameplay. Yeah, it's it is quite difficult when you first get into it because yeah, I, I felt like I was. In fact, all I was doing was just clicking on on yeah. enemies, and I was like, "Is this it? Is this really how you deal damage? You're not there's there's no aiming or anything really. It's just well, he's a combo in it uh, as well. So at a certain point during a hit, uh, you'll get a little icon above your head that flashes. Yeah, yeah. And if you hit that, then you start off a secondary attack, and then a third attack, and you string combos together, and you can get um, but you're only combos. But you're just clicking, though, aren't you? Well, you are clicking. 
which it's like yeah, a, it's like a one button <laughs> QTE, one button constant QTE. To well, that's the way that it felt to me. I didn't give it yeah. enough time to. I didn't get out of the first intro bit. So, I mean, as you develop on, you um, you learn different methods of attack. You get two different uh, weapons. You get a steel sword for attacking humans, and you get a silver sword for attacking like beasties and demons. So you can switch between the two, but you also get different attack modes. You get a group attack mode, a speed attack mode, and a power attack mode. And it's all about trying to string these together with magic as well that you learn as you develop your character. Yeah. The story itself, um, tying in with the novels that I've been reading, is actually very interesting. It does draw you in quite well. There's, uh, there's a big backstory behind they, they're the whole Witcher franchise, which is obviously based off these, uh, these Polish novels that have only just been released in English or only released in the last few years anyway. All right. Yeah, are, so, are you going to follow it through though? Is it interesting enough for, for you to complete it? Well, I bought The Witcher 2 on the back of playing so far for The Witcher 1, so it's my intention to go through and obviously play the third one when it comes out uh, in September, I think, or October. See, apparently The Witcher 2, I bought The Witcher 2 first. Someone said to me, you can get into it from 2 and mm. it's much better. So I bought it. I haven't tried it because I, I, I saw the enhanced edition of the first one and I thought, oh, I might as well try and play the first one. And now I can't be asked. <laughs> Well, apparently the control mechanism in the second one is a lot more user-friendly, i.e. Uh, you could use a gamepad if you wanted to instead of keyboard and mouse, whereas in the first one you're forced to use keyboard and mouse. Right. I might give it another go. I think it's it worthwhile because the story is pretty good. Yeah. Is that, is that your only, only accomplishment this week, then? Uh, I've been playing a little bit more of um, Fire Emblem, but... Uh, you talked about that last week, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much just... A, there's no story to that, it's just more strategy yeah yeah Lou um, the only game I've managed to play this this week is Planet Explorers with Steve um, oh I played Planet Explorers with Lou as well <laughs> <laughs> which was actually quite a lot of good, uh, quite a lot of fun it's so, did, you, did you spend the entire time laughing yeah. at water <laughs> um, yeah we'll we getting killed by 24 aliens well, no, we didn't get killed by 24 aliens. This time. Well, Steak did quite a bit, actually. But we got <laughs> killed by flying purple things instead. Yeah. It scared the shit out of me. Um, but it's, it's, it, it feels like if you've ever started a, 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 an MMO with a, an, another person and tried to work out what the hell's going on and what you're supposed to do, it's like that. It's actually quite a lot of fun not knowing what you're meant to do. Um, you end up kind of building stuff and exploring. And it... It's just nice for a game not to hold your hand for a change. I really like that. So that, I've been playing a bit of that, and that, that's the only game I've played this week, unfortunately. Yeah, Fair we, we, had, uh, we had quite a lot of uh, fun playing that. We, it was, it was just getting thrown completely the deep end, um, just like running around. We did have a target, but we got waylaid that many times, picking up resources and going to villages and battling random aliens. Uh, the game actually, we were on there for a few hours, weren't we? Oh, we played for about four hours, maybe? It didn't actually achieve anything. No, <laughs> we didn't. We, at the end of it, we figured out how to make walls a million yeah. feet high. <laughs> That's an achievement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we made jetpacks. Brickler achievement. Unlocked vocational trade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just I'm just making sure that the, the stream is working because uh, I forgot to, I've I've been hosting both channels on both and I think they were looping and no one could see anything. Um, Hello everyone, well, if you can, if you fine. haven't seen us before, we've just done intros and what we've played this week. I think it's fine. When we get XSplit, it'll be much easier. I hope. Right, um, yeah, what I've been playing this week, well, the last not last week, but the week before and the last couple of days, um, I played a bit more of Divinity Original Sin. Um, not much. I haven't really got back into that in a, a great amount of detail. I do. It's one of those, again, that I, I think it's going to be worth investing in when I do get to it. I played a bit of Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, um, which was absolutely crazy mental... Like I, I, I was expecting something even slightly related to Far Cry Three, but it's just not at all, is it? And the story, oh, is, you... but the game is, isn't it? But it's basically no, it's Far Cry Three with a different story and graphics. Isn't it doesn't it? even yeah, the game play, it doesn't no, feel like Far Cry Three. Yeah, you, Far, Far Cry Three for me. You've got similar moves. Me. If you, you, it feels the same, Sam. I think it felt. It feels like Far Cry Three with the, a neon paint job. And not that that's a bad thing. You've got obviously the the big. Blood dragons themselves, which are absolutely mental, but you, it's the same sort of uh, structure. You sort of go to a base, take it over. You're going around in jeeps and stuff. It's, it feels a lot like the mechanics are pretty much the same. 
yet again I didn't get that far with it I got I did the intro bit uh, with the comedy tutorial at the very beginning uh, which I, I, I was, was laughing at the entire oh, entire duration um, and then I got into the base and then unfortunately my PC does not like CryEngine and it was a bit hot the day I played it and my graphics card get, kept overheating so I didn't get to play much more than that but it's a lot faster than Far, Far Cry 3 you you get thrown in with all the weapons or with a, you know every type of weapon at the very beginning um, again I don't know if that they get taken off you when you finish the tutorial mission uh, <laughs> probably that's um, a game trope in itself isn't it yeah so but anyway basically I got given everything like the sniper rifle shotgun um assault rifle and pistol and there was grenades as well involved killed everyone in the base and then my computer just started making every polygon into a i don't know just horrible black thing uh, and then it exploded so yeah i didn't get much further than that but i uh, played that quite a bit and then i think i was really enjoying it i think i just got distracted by something else and never went back to it i got um obviously it's not as long as the main far cry 3 so i think i was i would guess that i was probably halfway to three quarters through it when I stopped playing but I don't know <laughs> need yeah. to go back and shit again I will I do want to play it I'm just going to wait I think until winter until my computer can actually handle it <laughs> it's so stupid isn't it that is so stupid it's outside yeah uh, anyway um yeah, but apart from that, I've also just uh, yesterday and today been playing a bit of Infinity Wars if you've heard of that any of you it's uh, a trading card game and it's not something that I usually go for, but I saw uh, Josie play it the other day. Uh, Josie is the host of MMO Buff, which is another show I do, if uh, anyone listening is, cares. Pimp, uh, pimp, pimp, pimp. pimp, pimp. Um, yeah, Infinity Wars, it's like a trading card game, and it's it's like a Hearthstone, um, if you've heard of or played of Hearthstone. Hearthstone's a really big online like uh, game that a lot of people watch on Twitch, a lot of people, there's big competitions for it as well, and um, I, I, I haven't played it, so I don't know how it differs but i did really quite enjoy it it's it's a it's a strategy at the end of the day you know you, you each card has got each card that you put down has got like a a defense and a health uh, sorry not a defense and a health sorry a defense and an attack rating um and there's every single card has like different rarities as well so it's like it's like running around in world of warcraft picking up loads of different armors and then figuring out which ones are the best for the which situation that's the only analogy that I can really come up with. It's it's card based, and you've got um, you've got like a play area where you've got an attack and a defense zone. Um, if you have no cards in your defense zone, attackers can attack you and damage your uh, your base. And same applies on the other side. If you have no attackers in your attack zone, they, you can't damage them. But there's a lot of strategy in terms of you can move cards from each of the zones, and you can. It's quite interesting. It's in beta at the moment. Um, I've never played a card game apart from this so I'm totally new to it so I probably sound a little bit daft to people who've played it a lot you know played these kind of games a lot I liked it I'd give I'd give it a go for a bit of a difference you know and it's free uh, free to play and uh, at the moment there's um, I think Josie on MMO Buff has actually got a, a um a key for you get loads of extra cards I don't know I haven't got that far into it yet I'm kind of play I played through all the tutorials I've just started playing the campaign in it and there's also like player versus player versus stuff as well and leaderboards and rankings things like that it's quite an in-depth thing i think uh, there's a whole story surrounding it as well there's uh, there's lots of different races in it and each set of races has a set of cards and i said every single card is you can have you can pick a rare card for example that wipes out everything on the board including your own for example or you can you can pick something that boosts or buffs your defenses on particular cards or boosts your attack or you Sounds get very nerdy yeah yeah it's well it's you know, it's a card game, and then it's like a Magic: The Gathering type thing. It's uh, yeah. um, again, I haven't played that, but I know I've got a few friends who do. I'd recommend it. It's pretty, it, it it's a good laugh. If anything, you know, it's a good strategy game. If anything, um, other than that, I'm the one who's been on holiday, and I've played more games than all of you put together. But I've only <laughs> been playing little bits of each one. Um, I've just started playing today. Reus uh, or Reus, Reus, R E U S. Now that's um, it's a building game. I've I've played about a, maybe half an hour of it today, and I quite liked it. It's um, it's a two D version of black and white. So that's the best way I can put it. Oh. For those who don't know what black and white are, um, black and white is sorry. Uh, it was a god game where you basically had big giants and ro uh, and different 
you big had giants. One, no, you had one. You had one giant, didn't well, you? Didn't have different giants. Sorry. <laughs> <sighs> You had a giant, and you and you could slap it around and kind of tell it. That's that's basically my redeeming memory of black and white is that you could slap the shit out of a monkey. <laughs> Loved it. You like spanking your monkey? Don't I you? do. I do. My favourite pastime. But he got really upset as well if you kept slapping him. He got really upset. It's brilliant. Anyway, this I can't is... imagine what. <laughs> <laughs> and you can pet him and stroke. Anyway, I like black and white, but that's a different game. Um, uh, yeah, so Reyes is kind of like a 2D version of that. You've got a world, which is round, and then you you move the world around and you've got different giants that do different things. So far I've opened or I've, I've, I've opened the, the wood giant, which obviously creates woods and uh, forests. Um, and so the far... Just, furniture? Yeah, some, and he, he puts f- um, furniture. Shut up, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> he puts he puts like um, seeds in the ground and things like that and grows different crops. Um, you got a, a mountain giant that guess what he does? He creates mountains. Uh, you got a sea giant, ocean giant who creates oceans, and uh, they've all got loads of loads of options as well. But again, because I'm just doing the tutorials, I'm only just getting into it. Really good. Again, I'm quite enjoying it, but I think it might be one of those that'll take a little bit to unlock it all. A bit like a civilization type game, you know, where you've got lots and lots and lots of things to do. But, <laughs> but we in- still haven't finished a game, and we started it about six times or something now. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's my that's my lot for this week. Uh, okay. So, subject in hand. Bit? Yeah, the subject in hand, which uh, apparently, according to our document, is maps and levels. No, it's not. No, that was last week. Um, you look at the wrong document. No, I'm not. If you look above, we've got two two. Anyway, doesn't matter. Oh, um, yeah. So what 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 we're going to talk about this week is bosses and boss fights. Unfortunately, not many of the games that we've played have bosses in them. I think The Witcher probably does. Thinking about it, maybe. Um, it has like, battles. Yeah. Sorry. It has like big battles, but I haven't actually come across a singular big enemy yet. I'm sure they'll be there though somewhere, but we Who can't really comment so. on it unfortunately. Um, I said Sam's got Shovel Knight in his thing, and there's lots of bosses in that, so we could uh, we could talk about that maybe. There, there are, but there's not. There's nothing that's made that's amazingly interesting. Like, like, oh, this boss changed my life. There's nothing that. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, I played that Spectre Knight, and it took me a million goals to kill him, but I got him eventually. And then I went on to that that night that you said that was really hard. Which one? Throwing, was it? throwing shit at you all the time. Throwing shit at you all the time, Knight. And uh, he was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and he was pretty easy. I got him first go. I, I, I think it, it must just be a preference thing. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, 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 I've made a list of of bosses and uh, boss fights that I love and hate. But I've made a huge list. You should see this list. I, I've made one because I, I don't really have favourites with bosses. I think, and I think it's hard to define a favourite because because of how a boss fight plays out it can be both terrible and brilliant in the same in the same breath in my eyes i i I like for example um one of my favorite boss fights ever and i'm sure i'm probably stealing this off sam uh, i imagine is psychomantis from uh, metal gear solid one the 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 pure for anybody who hasn't played metal gear solid one i'm going to spoil something that is one of the best parts of the game for you so Turn off if you don't care. Yeah, have your finger up. We've given up with the spoiler thing, by the way, because the whole show is spoilers, basically. And if you don't, you're not interested. You're not gonna. You're not gonna be watching. Um, Psycho Mantis in Metal Gear Solid One. You had to unplug the controller from controller port one to plug it into controller port two in order to actually inflict any amount of decent damage on him. I think you could kill him if it was in one, but he was almost impossible. Am I right there, Sam? I, is this a bug or is this a gameplay feature? No, it, it's, it's an actual gameplay feature. It's a fourth I think thing. eventually the kernel... Because in, in Metal Gear Solid, the kernel keeps ringing you all the time. You get these codec calls. And it's like, kernel, blah, blah, blah. And the kernel will ring you and say, Snake, do you think you should try doing this? So eventually, yeah, yeah. if you're too thick to figure out how to beat a boss, the kernel just rings you and tells you. Um, <laughs> but he doesn't. Basically, it doesn't. yeah, there's... It's really weird because Psycho Mantis is psychic and he's a real psychic, so he anticipates every move that you make and he also reads your memory card. So if you've got any of the Konami games on your PlayStation memory card, he'll say, oh, you play Castlevania or something, if you've got one. And he'll, he'll sort of say, oh, you've not saved very much or you've done this, that and the other about what you've been playing. It might not sound like elaborate these days, but when it happened, when it happened to me, I loved that. that that's one of those experiences that I wish I could 
I could erase from my memory and, and do all over again, you know, because yeah, it was that amazing. There was, another, there was another, um, Kojima's big on fourth wall stuff, and there was another big fourth wall thing in there, but it's not a boss fight, so I'm not going to go into There's it. There's a lot of big fourth wall things in Metal Gear. In yeah. all of them, in fact, yeah. Um, yeah, so that psycho, basically, once you once you put the controller in controller part two, you could kill him pretty quickly and easily, uh, and... But yeah, I, I like that. And that uh, the problem, the, the reason that I brought that up is because it was both the most frustrating experience of my life because I couldn't kill him and I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Why I can't, you know? But when I real, you know, when I figured it out or I got told by the colonel, I can't even remember what happened now. Um, I, I, it was like, oh, oh, that is actually brilliant. I see what you mean by that. It's a kind of a kick yourself moment, isn't it? It's, it's if if it pays off when it does that, then it's fine. And you remember that as a good boss fight, but if it does, it, it it's taking a gamble. If you if you don't figure it out, and I guess if the colonel actually tells you plug your controller into the next port, I think it subliminal. He starts idiot. off with subliminal messages. Like, not subliminal. Sorry, he starts off with like really subtle hints. Like maybe you should well, try something out of the box. Or, you know, like something bit different. There's, there's a cue for it. Basically, when you're doing the fight, um, Psychomantis will do some attacks and whatnot. And then he'll, he'll sort of stop and go do like a thing where we're like, yeah, and he'll do like a little pose or whatever it is. And the screen goes black, except yeah. for it just says Hideo in green lettering. Obviously Hideo Kojima, which get, is bigger and then gets smaller and then goes away. And that's your cue to change the controller port over. It's really weird. And you're not going to know that's what you're supposed to do. Um, but it's, it, it's, there's stops in the fight where it's clear that Psycho Mantis is doing something mm. that involves your telly. So there's a little, it's a kind of a clue, but it's such a weird clue. But it, I don't yeah. remember how I figured out. I'm not sure if the colonel told me after I, I died a hundred times, or if I, I just was like, I got annoyed and changed the controllers over. I, I don't, don't think know if he I does tell you. Two. I really don't think he tells you. You know, I think he might just subtly hint towards it, but he doesn't ever tell. Because that'd be that'd be like that's one of the best moments in the game, and he spoils it for you after you spacking around with it for 20 dies you know, 20 lives. The Colonel does that a lot in Metal Gear Solid. Oh, if you God. don't figure out and you die 800 times, he just rings you and tells you what to do a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, well, you're right. Give it a yeah, you twat. But on the same... Yeah, yeah on, basically. On the same... Snake, thing. I thought you were the best agent ever, let me do this. Fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> on the same, on the same, um, on the same note, I've got in my favourite list, um, Ugzan 3. Um, from Serious Sam, and I think me, Sam, and Steve all love that fight because we've done it so many times together. What the U Ugzan Three is a huge. He's the biggest boss I've seen in my entire life. I, I'm sure there's bigger now because people have probably outdone it, but he's a huge, towering like demon from outer space. Is and he described as 500 feet tall in the game or something? Something ridiculous, yeah. But I mean, he's huge. He's, he's it's a massive part of it. It's at the end, and it's really good. But the fight itself, even though. I give it props for him being a massive boss and it being really cool and interesting, but the fight itself is a little bit like one I suppose once you've figured it out it's a bit laborious. That yet you have to draw him into the centre and then get his own spaceship to kill him or something. Yeah, I mean that 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 opens up a point that I wanted to bring up and I think that's quite neat neatly goes towards it, but that is a problem I have with quite a lot of boss fights, is that they do tend to be a puzzle rather than a fight. Yeah. I see what um, you mean, yeah. And yeah, it's hard. Got, uh, it's... I was going to say you got to figure out some like elaborate method of disposing of him instead of actually just having a fight. Yeah, but it's it's usually it's usually not that elaborate. It's usually obscure but not elaborate. Like the um, the end boss of Half Life, the huge baby thing. Um, oh, I've got yeah. his name written down here. It's uh, it's called uh, uh, Nihilant. and it's it basically you just got to bounce off some jump pads. Um, and it fires lightning into its brain, and you do that a few times, and it dies. Well, sorry, which, which, which boss was uh, that? The, the end boss of Half-Life. When you're on Zen, the alien world, it's yeah. a big kind of floating baby thing in a cave, and you've got to bounce off some jump pads um, and hit some crystals on the wall or something, and it fires bolts of lightning at it. Or something, And then its, then its head opens, and you shoot at its brain. I can't it's remember. It's very, it's, it's very, it's very. When you, when, when I'm describing it, I'm just thinking. There's so many bosses that are like that. There's so many bosses where you do something repeatedly to kill it rather than fight it. Mm. But there's at the same time. I mean, I can understand why that is a complaint. I can understand why, why that's not 
that fun because it's been done time and time again and maybe it's a bit laborious when you you come to actually fighting the boss but if you let you if you let someone kill a boss with like one pistol shot to the head is that is that any better no no that it's not but but i just think that there's there's a, there's two types of bosses really there's probably lots of types of bosses but there's two main types of bosses that stick in my head and that's bosses that you defeat by solving a puzzle and bosses that you defeat by kicking its ass yeah. and they seem to be very they don't seem to coincide very often. So, what's your solution, Lou? Um, well, I, well, some of the bosses that I've got down, um, R type, um, classic game, shoot 'em up. The third level of pretty much every remake or um, sequel to R type is basically a giant ship that you're gonna fly around, blowing bits off. And that's a great fight. It's kind of a an auto scroller in that you you basically have to. No, be in the right place, so otherwise you get squashed by the ship. But it, it's a really memorable fight because you're fighting against a huge ship and blowing bits off, and it's all exploding, and you're taking out its guns, its thrusters, and stuff like that. It doesn't feel like a puzzle. It's not. It's not a case of you've got to shoot it in the same spot three times and it dies. Mm. Well, then, then you look at something like um, that, that rack hive that we we fought in um, in Borderlands a few weeks ago, if you remember it. It was mm. down in that canyon. We we were ploughing bullets into that until we realised where its weak point was, and that it was getting one health per bullet that was take we were take it was taken off, and then yeah. we found its weak point and it died with you know a lot quicker. But it, it I don't know. Is that? I, I, it's. I don't know if that's bad though, because what else can you do? What? what? Well, there, you you can make a bot battle genuinely hard. I mean, another example I've got um, is the cyber demon from Doom, um, Doom Two. It's just a big, big body with lots of health that fires rockets at you, and it's a genuine fight. You've got to avoid its rockets. There's no special thing you've got to do, like at the very end of Doom, where you've got to shoot into that um, hole in the head to get John Romero to stick. <laughs> uh, it, it is actually a genuine fight, and I like those kind of things. I like uh, battles where you are actually battling, as opposed to battles where you've got to find a weak spot or you've got to press a button three times. I would have to say. If I had to choose like a favourite battle of all time, I know, regardless of the the great battles like the Psychomantis ones, and there's lots of other. I mean, there's there's a lot in the Metal Gear Solid games that I'd love to bits. There's also a lot that I really hate as well. Um, but if I had to choose like the best type of boss battle, I think it would be something like Portal. That is a puzzle, but that was it. Interesting to work out. They did it in such a way. Portal and Portal Two, they were both similar in the way that they delivered the final boss. Um, have you all you guys played all those games to start off yeah. with? Yeah. Uh, again, to the audience, if you haven't played Portal or Portal Two, at the end of the first one, you um, you fight Glados, which is like the main antagonist all the way through the game. She is. Uh, you basically have to strip bits off her and put them in a certain place. To you know, I'm not going to go any more than that, but you have to you have to take her apart. Yeah, use the gravity gun and sorry, use the not the gravity gun, sorry, the the portal gun to get these bits off her and then set and then put them in a place. I think Portal 2's fights better because you've got the bouncy um bouncy gel and the gels, that's it, gel. the gels, yeah. yeah. Um but it's the same kind of thing again, that's what I'm saying. But I like that. I like that puzzle. I like the fact that it wasn't just shooting loads of bullets into a boss, an unrealistic amount of bullets into a boss. I, the amount of times I shot the final boss in Quake 2 with a real gun, a real gun, right? It, it, <laughs> you know, one shot from that would make anybody explode, wouldn't it? You know? <laughs> I think it comes down to an issue of mechanics. It, we talked about this, I think, in the first episode about the, uh, the artistic intent of the game. What experience are you trying to give people? So... A game like Portal is a puzzle game in the first-person perspective, so it's totally natural that their bosses would be slightly more dangerous in elaborate puzzles. You don't, you're not gonna, it, you don't want the game to start off as a puzzle game and then you get given a submachine gun at the end and you're like, right now, fight something. You're like, well, I haven't been doing that the whole time I've been here. So yeah. that's a great. I think that the sort of thing you were talking about, Lou, is only a bad thing if it's if it's contradictory to what the game has been about up until that point. Now, I haven't played all the way through the first Half-Life, but they never seemed like they were very... The bosses weren't really the, the focus of the game, especially where Half-Life 2 felt like it was more about a journey with some set pieces in there. There weren't really bosses. There wasn't... There's an end boss in it, but even that didn't really feel... 
Mm, I don't know. It's weird, really. It's I don't not really know. a boss, is it? In Half Life Two, it's it's a. Uh, you do. You, you, you have that. You have the guy on the. He's going up on the the big weird machine on the top of that building, and you've got yeah. to fire the, the the sort of orbs at him. But you know, you're not firing at him. At him. This doesn't remember busy. at all. I can't. I can't, well, I can't remember both the Half Life end games. What's wrong with me? I, I vaguely remember them, but I do remember that guy he, where you got to fire the orbs. Yeah, it's Breen. It's it's Professor Breen, um, or Doctor Breen, or whatever. And he's going up a lift, and basically you can't hit him, but you can you can fire those orbs at the things around him. They bounce around, don't they? Yeah. So it's kind of, it is a puzzle. You're not fighting Breen. You you're kind of chasing after him. But you don't actually lot, catch him. But that that to me seems like a lot of what Half Life Two was about. Yeah. The game was a, was a sort of thinking man shooter in a lot of ways. You you were supposed to sort of mess around with your environment, and you had to sort of think laterally in that game. I don't know if the first one's as much like that because I've only played the first the, bit. And I haven't really completed it. The second game in my uh, the, the my re- again redeeming memory of the second Half Life is the gravity because it was a big thing then when that came out. That was like I think was it the first game with like really good phys- physical gravity? No, the f- first one was the Quick One Engine basically. Well, to be was... technically, the, the Half Life Two is also the Quake One engine, but it's um, it the Half Life One didn't really have any defining mechanics, but what it did have was a really well thought out game with a really good story and really good kind of I, I think level to, design, I guess. I've got to disagree there. Quake and Quake One don't have that kind of physics that I'm talking about. When there were puzzles based on the physics uh, in Half Life Two, and that was the first yeah. game I played that you could you could rest something on a on a cylinder and have it wobble up and yeah. down or yeah. you could that, put a brick that, that on something Half-Life and it would weight it down you know that was Half-Life 2's selling point it, yeah, was, yeah. it was the physics puzzles I mean it is a great game as well in my eyes I still I, yeah. I do really like playing that but yeah hmm. so uh, that, my point was just that I think it's what kind of boss the game should have depends on the game some games you know like Metal Gear Rising for example had really tough bosses where you were just getting attacked and you had to really just like counter guard and then hit four of attacks when it was necessary, and you're like, well, that's the game. So the bosses were just an exaggerated form of what the game, and that was perfect. Yeah. Mm. Whereas I, I think th- it depends th- on the game, is what I'm saying. It does, yeah. I think some games kind of do the cheap thing, though. Some games will will introduce you to a game where you basically just have to fight hordes of enemies, and then it'll realise that you are so good at doing that that the only way that it can actually challenge you is by giving you a boss with an obscure puzzle attached to it. So you're shooting at it and doing no damage to it until you realise you've got to press a switch on the wall to allow you to damage it. I don't like that kind of thing. And it is exactly what you said. It's taken out of the context of the game. For the 99.9% of the game, you've been shooting the shit out of everything and suddenly you're in a position where you can't just shoot at it. You've got to do some kind of puzzle. Uh, okay. And that's quite jarring to you me. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of the, uh, the final boss. There is going to be a final boss battle on my game. I was uh, going to ask about that and what you were thinking. Well, I can't. It. Obviously, I can't. It's one of them things that I need to keep to myself. Um, I'm pretty open about my development, but when it comes to the story, I, I'm going to have to keep some to myself. But you are planning on having some type of boss battle. I am. It's going to be Chris's sp- massive digitized face, like the at the end of Thor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'll have that as a as an Easter egg somewhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, my final boss battle. The way that I'm thinking again, I haven't planned it. But the way I'm thinking of it is going to be using the core mechanics of the game, and it's just going to be a much more elaborate puzzle based on it. You know, it's it's again kind of taking influence from the portals. You know, that kind of that, that kind of thing. Um, but so you there's also par- no, you just got to park all the fuck out of someone. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> you got to run. You got to run on their face. And well, then, no, you know and what? Then hack their mind. That's the thing. I'm, that's, I'm, that's how you I've got, I've got a good set of um, mechanics in the game, and I think I, I can't say too much because I've got. I hope it works. You and really I, want to, don't I, you? I do really want to, but I, I can't say too much because you know what I'm like. I'll talk about, I talk about everything and anything to anyone, but yeah, this I have to keep to myself. I am going to have a boss, boss battle, and it is going to be using most of the mechanics from the game, but it's also going to be introducing a final mechanic. That hasn't been used in the game. Um, and it's I, only going to be yeah, used once. It's only going to be used once. Now I'll tell Lou because he's under NDA anyway. Uh, later on, but that's uh, that's as, that's as far as I'd go with it. But yeah, I've, the, 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 it's that last final mechanic that I'm not 100 percent sure about at the moment because of what you just said, basically. Because I'm not sure if I should include something that hasn't been included in the game yet. 
and it is a brand new mechanic to the game, but it's not a brand new mechanic to people. It's it's a quite a standard mechanic. Well, I would consider just as a little piece really? of advice. <laughs> do you remember the end of Metal Gear Solid Two when you're in? Uh, it's big spoilers to the end of Metal Gear Solid Two. I, I, oh, I, mean, I love the end of Metal Gear Solid Two. It is right. So, amazing. in terms of being, introducing a new mechanic for the last boss, you get given the high frequency blade by Snake. And you have to fight through a load of Arsenal Ten goo with it. Then you fight the Metal Gear Rays. Then you fight Solidus with the sword. So it's a new mechanic, but it, the game gives you a little bit of practice with it. And you think it's not going to come back. You play with the sword for a bit, and you're like, "That was pretty cool." Then you fight all these big Metal Gears, and you're like, "Ah!" Oh. Then you know there's going to be a fist, you know, a person-to-person -person fight because there's always a big there's punch always at the end of Metal Gear. Two on, top of, a, on yeah. top of a building no tops on <laughs> going ah <laughs> literally but I fucking yeah. love that shit so you, you fight it with the sword but you played with the sword so my advice would be you could introduce that mechanic a little bit earlier cheekily give them something so they played with it a little bit then take it away again then give it back something like that that's Maybe. a way to do it that pisses people off there's plenty of opportunity for me to do that unfortunately the, the, the morals of my game don't allow me to do that and it forms a big part of the end of the story and hopefully future games if I get to that point it's actually it's actually not a big thing it's quite a small thing it's it's a it's a split second thing in fact and I'm hoping that because it's a split second thing it will um, it will create the urgency and the uh, the atmosphere that I want at that particular moment in the story like a cinematic atmosphere anyway I'm gonna stop talking about it because I can't say much more um sorry <laughs> just uh, yeah I'll uh, we'll move on. So, um, Steve, you haven't said much. What uh, what bosses Sorry. do you like or don't like? Go on, give us a topic. Give us a boss. Um, well, we've already spoke about Glados, um, which is one of my favourite bosses uh, across the first. Well, um, on both portals, uh, one of the my kind of hate, my worst uh, bosses, would be uh, the weapons in Final Fantasy VII. I noticed that you put yeah. them on your list as well. I oh, put, put one of them on. Emerald I, is it or Ruby? No, Ruby. Um, specifically Ruby because there's only one way to kill them uh, that I'm aware of. I mean, I'm sure again, yeah. Final Fantasy experts know more than I do. But I mean, um, me and Lou discussed this um, later, well uh, last week sometime, and at, at the time I was playing Final Fantasy VII quite a lot, and I had uh, level 99 on all my characters, 9999 health, 999 MP. I'd all my materials mastered. Uh, I'd quad slash um, counter everything. Knights of the round mastered. <laughs> I could defeat um, Setheroth in seconds. Yep. And Emerald and Ruby weapon just boosh dead yep. straight away. I've actually so frustrating. I've killed Emerald, um, and it, and it, I believe me, it took me a long time to get there. And I had I had yeah. like every material in the game uh, maxed well, out you, everything. Do you, do you know that how you're supposed to defeat Emerald weapon? Um, by blind look. It doesn't sound like you do what you just said. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't. I You've haven't actually. Just I've, look, I've completed. I, com I, I killed them once. I killed Emerald once. I've never killed Ruby, by the way. I've killed em Emerald once, and it was completely sheer luck that I did it. Can I just ask what the weapons are? Sorry, what right. are they? Yeah, they so. Are... <laughs> Go on, let Luke. Yeah, it basically, um, <clears throat> towards the end of the story of Final Fantasy, the, the, the idea is that the planet's being attacked and destroyed by all the protagonists and antagonists together they're all basically screwing up the planet so the planet fights back with these gigantic robots called weapons ah. um, and there's, there's, there's a few of them that are integral to the plot but there are also two, uh, Ruby and Emerald one of them is underwater, that's Emerald and one of them is in a desert, that's Ruby um, that was specially added just for the international release which pissed the Japanese off something rotten Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, they, they were didn't. not in. They were not in the original Japanese version, and then the Japanese saw that the um, international version, the American and the U. Uh, the, the European versions had these two extra bosses, and they went right. We want that, so they actually got an international release in Japan. As if you don't release that in Japan. Uh, that would, uh, yeah. Well, if you think about it, the, 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 they, yeah. they have nothing to do with the story. The, no, of the, course they don't. But the cool, <laughs> the cool yeah, fights. But, yeah. I mean, as much as I might hate them, they're cool fights, and it's interesting to try and work it out you know i mean i again i haven't uh, it was um it, it was good because in, it, in a game where you'd mastered everything you still had these two enemies that still posed a massive threat and you kind of held off on completing the game 
Mm. Just so you could get like, well, or, or try and 100% it. And I did in the end, but I remember wasting so well, say wasting, spending so many hours, different tactics trying to defeat these. And then uh, Lou told me how you're actually supposed to do it. And it was something that I would never have come up with. Mm. Um, Ruby, I came up with it on my own, uh, how to enter the battle at least. After that, I've, I've just, I still can't do it. But I know, how, I know that you're supposed to enter the battle with two characters dead. And yeah. that's what that and this is the only way you can do it because immediately she stick he she it, it sticks is. sticks the tentacles out of the back and the tentacles the tentacles do different attacks but previous to that you can um, if you enter with all three characters or more than one character rather it'll it'll knock a number of your characters out of the game out of the yeah. fight so you you've only got one or two or one character when you've got one character left alive he'll bring his tentacles up and he does different attacks and then that's kind of yeah, if you enter it with two dead tentacles are straight there you can then start attacking him but you still need tactics at that point it's still yeah. not easy I mean in, interestingly they, they are as far as I can think of the only two bosses in the game that require specific tactics like very specific tactics otherwise you get killed well, the first one the first the very first boss I can't remember the name Airbuster. of it Airbuster no no no, no, the, no the, it's scorpion, not the Airbuster scorpion, scorpion guard. yeah the scorpion thing I, I, I played the game so many times through without actually realising there was a tactic to that, that fight. Yeah, uh, but it tells you the tactic in the text I know, when you... When I know, you... but I don't read very well, do I? <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I, I, I miss things like that all the time, though, in games. I mean, I'll, I'll even read text and it still won't go in, but I didn't... Is this where the colonel rings up Chris? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Press X! <laughs> Press X the to... The colonel's not there. Press He's X to life. Oh. Um, yeah, so I, 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 again, I didn't realise there was a tactic there, but when I figure the tactic out, it was a lot easier, and you enter the, you know, leave the battle with more health. By figuring the tactic stuff. out, you mean you when you read the screen? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm shut up. <sighs> <laughs> but yeah, the um, I said Ruby was a bitch. Emerald, I did once. Um, I can't even remember. I think I got. Did you get ultimate weapon from her? I really can't remember. I think it's ultimate weapon because I What's definitely. That? No, no. But um, from Ruby weapon, you get the. Um... Oh crap! No, not ruby, the... emerald. Oh, emerald weapon, emerald weapon. You. I think you get. What you get from I think you get. I think you get. Um, cloud it's not, best it's... sword. I don't think so. I don't think you do. You get something else. Um, it's something related to uh, getting the golden chocobo. I think. Oh, that might be ruby. Mm, I don't know. You get the desert. Remember. Oh, you get the desert rose from ruby. I think. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what that is, but that's that's just popped into my head. Right. Next, then, um, Lou. Go on, give us another boss that you want to talk about. Um, well, um, I can give you some some, some of my uh, least favourite bosses, and I think it's going back to the, this what we're talking about: puzzle bosses versus like battle bosses. Um, if you think of any of the bosses from the Sonic games, certainly the 2D Sonic games. Can you remember spending more than five seconds beating any of them? No, and I don't think I died on any of them ever, either. <laughs> yeah. Look for the flashing I, yeah. red part of him. And then headbutt him. They're, they're, they're just uh, they're, they're terrible bosses, and there's only one game in a series, and it's unfortunately the game that f the fewest number of people have played. That's Sonic CD, where the bosses were actually quite... Um, they, they, they had something to them, yeah. They, they each had a, a certain way of doing it that was... It was interesting. Whereas the other Sonic games, basically, you run to the right of the screen, jump, and bounce off his head a few times, and he dies. And that's every boss. But again, <laughs> that was quite early on, wasn't it, in the console world? So yeah, but certainly not early on in terms of bosses. I mean, there's been some brilliant bosses really early on. There's um, there's a uh, what's the do you name not think? Do you not maybe think that they did that on purpose though? Do you not maybe think that because Sonic is a very very fast game? They, they they want a fast boss so you get to the next level and Possibly. the adrenaline's it still is. pumping maybe. Possibly it is an interesting point and the, the fact is that when you actually examine the Sonic games they are mostly holding right and mm. watching Sonic fly through some pipes at a million miles an hour and uh, pressing A occasionally to jump. Yeah, or, I mean they're, they're Sonic almost like a bit the quick time elaborate. events that you're on about really aren't they? There's not a great deal to them and I'm I'm sure there's going to be Sonic fans now just tearing me apart and but but no it's the same with it's the same with uh, Mario games as well because you, you 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 it's not quick time but certain things happen in the same order every time so there's no there's not yeah. very much randomness or procedurally generated stuff I, I i've got to say being um a long time sega fan and not really getting into nintendo at all i still think the mario games have better platform gameplay i i Way better. 
will agree because one, well, I'm a Nintendo but that's boy another, anyway. That's another subject. Yeah, yeah. Um, another terrible, terrible set of bosses, and I'm probably, I think you'll probably disagree with me quite badly on this one, Chris, is the dragons in Skyrim. Okay. Because they are very samey battles. Everyone is predictable, so basically you shoot arrows at it until it's at half health, then it drops next to you and you beat its head in. That's if you're a melee character. Well, yeah. I suppose the character that you play has some bearing on that, but it's still, they still seem to be very boring and predictable battles. But quite difficult. They are, there is... I didn't find them difficult. Uh, I didn't find them difficult at all. I didn't die, but I f in terms of the amount of hit points they had, that I found that difficult because some of them were... I mean, maybe I just wasn't hard enough. I don't know. Well, the thing is, I was playing a stealth character, and one of the th one of the quick flaws that I realised in being a stealth character is that you can't hide from dragons, so you can't backstab them. No. So you basically have to run up to the front of them and hit them in the head a few times. You need a cardboard box. But even box. even being a even being a stealth character, uh, I'd just pull out a two-handed sword and whack them, and that was it. They were dead. There was there wasn't much challenge to it, and there wasn't much of a fight to it. Even even in the beautiful sandbox sort of undulating environment that you get in Skyrim it was still a very predictable battle and that was very disappointing made even more disappointing by the fact that you were in this really interesting environment it seems like it should have been more to it, that it should have been to and fro and hiding from each other and, and stuff like that but it just it didn't really work like that, it was it would fly around above you for a bit, you'd shoot it till it was half health and it'd come and land next to you mm. and that I know, was every I know what you mean but again I when it comes to Skyrim and those kind of games, there's so much involved that I didn't really consider them... A f I didn't really consider that a flaw. I just consider it another enemy that needed defeating, you know? I don't know. It yeah, they're not... I mean, are they really classed as bosses? Because Alduin is. But yeah. the other ones are just creatures in the world. A lot of the time. I think I mean, the, 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 no, they the, are bosses, though. I, th I would say, yeah, they kind of pop up in the sense that they're kind of like mini-bosses. They're all named, aren't they? No, they're not. They're just ancient oh. dragon or blood dragon or whatever. Yeah. Well, there, there are named dragons apart from Alduin. There are. The Parthenax up on the, the mountain and a few... Also looks at Alduin and like two others. I can't remember. Yeah, but oh. all the rest of them are just they're spawned every so often. There is one that you fight right at the beginning who spawns uh, above White... Yes. White Run? White Run? Is it White um, Run? It's I've the, got a map the there. Sounds right. <laughs> it's outside yeah, it's, out, it's, outside, it's outside White Run. Yes, and that's when, yeah. That's when they say that you are the dragon... <laughs> That, yeah, that's that's when you go and steal its soul, isn't it, for the first time, and they're, they're all a bit like, whoa. See, that yeah, was yeah. cool, but I think it was because that was your first introduction to a dragon, and you're like, oh, oh dragon! But yeah, well, every, single dragon fight after that, every single dragon fight after that is the same. Yeah, yeah, but you don't really fight him, you're running away from him. I mean, like, you're right. a dragon, and you kill it. Yeah. Um, it's that feeling, whereas in the introduction, yeah, you, the dragon's there, but you, you're sort of running away from it all the time, and someone's shouting at you saying, go over here. But, but I found that more interesting than fighting the dragons, and that's a shame, because it, it sets it up like mm. you're going to have this kind of hide-and-seek sort of going through buildings and things being smashed down and stuff. But when you that actually fight a dragon, fair. it's a very static event. It's just like a dragon spawns and you've got to kill it mm. in and the in same way. Of, I mean, a, a, a dragon, in terms of mythical creatures, is kind of... It seems to be the pinnacle of, of the most powerful, the most daunting... Of the sort of purely physical creatures, it's a huge lizard that breathes fire and swords can't really hurt them and they're just, they've got very tough skin and there's all this stuff and of course, you know, a lot of them are very intelligent and a lot of different mythologies so they're kind of like the you know the ultimate creature aren't they in, in, mythology, in traditional western mythology the dragons yeah. are the big all and end all so um, you kind of want them to feel like they're these epic struggles yes if it had been like the first encounter with Alduin and you had to like run away and then go up a tower where he's chasing you and then jump on his head and then you hang on and then stab him in the eye. That would have been really cool. That would have been, you know, Shadow of the Colossus type stuff. Yeah, and that's that's how the game was sold, unfortunately. The, the early footage did have that sort of, I'm facing off against a dragon and this is all the stuff that's going to happen with it, but it didn't deliver. And I guess that's a, a common complaint of a lot of the Elder Scrolls game and they don't quite deliver what they say they're going to deliver. Uh, Mythalo in the chat just said, uh, I wouldn't really say, it's again agreeing with uh, uh, what we've just said, I wouldn't really say that the dragons are boss fights, more mini bosses really, like just another animal to hunt. And he's also said, uh, there's, there's a crap ton of build up to the first dragon from the very start of the game as well. And it's the first time you, well, actually, no, you see one in the intro sequence, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I, when I say the first dragon, I mean the first one you kill. I know yeah, Alduin's yeah. right there at the beginning. He, he's the, he frees you basically. I'll yeah. do it from having your head chopped off. Yeah. Cheers, mate. 
Cheers. Now I'll, I'll kill. I'll pay you back for that later by killing you. In, t- <laughs> in two hundred hours, though, not right now. In two hundred yeah. hours, I'll <laughs> I'll fight you. I'll see you in two hundred hours, <laughs> which in which in in game hours is about seven years. Yeah, you spend that much time waiting. <laughs> just though, you just probably go through about seven <laughs> years of real in game time. <laughs> Occasionally, laughing at the name of the uh, the day, Turdus. Yeah, <laughs> the third Turtus. Right, I'll uh, I'll throw one in the. Uh... I, I think Steve's got a few more. Yeah. Hey, I think Steve and Sam have got one. Yeah. Have you not? I wanted to. Okay, uh, sorry. You, you talked about Psycho Mantis and I just joined in. All right, go on, Sam. Then um, I wanted to talk about another one from the Metal Gear Solid series. Yes, but it's sorry, but it's the it's the boss the, the end the sniper boss that you fight in Metal Gear Solid Three. And I'll tell you what's so interesting about it. What I was saying earlier is about a boss being the um, the test of all your skills that you've learned up to that point in the game. And the end in that game is is exactly that. There are so many ways to beat him. You can you can sort of chase him around. Um, it, all right, I'll, I'll go. I'll explain what the boss fight is. So <laughs> you, you, know fight, what I, fight. you know what I did? I just ran up to him, screaming, shooting bullets everywhere. That's, all. That's not like you, Chris. <laughs> yeah. That tactic will eventually work. Yeah, it, it, so it the, didn't. Yeah, go on. <laughs> so the end. The end is a, is a really old sniper. He's said to be over a hundred years old, and you he ends up facing off in this very large four leveled area, basically, where you have to find him, and he's sort of hiding in camouflage. And if he spots you, he'll shoot you. And it's basically a sniper battle, but it's not just a sniper battle. You can use all your camouflage stuff that you've got. You've got a directional microphone that you can use to find him. You can even Turn the, like turn the game off. Set your clock on your on your PlayStation so that it goes like a, I think a week in advance. Yeah. And if, you, if time goes forward, the end dies of old age if you don't beat him <laughs> within that time. You can also you can also defeat him before the boss fight even starts. There's a cutscene where the end is in a cutscene in a wheelchair, and if you're really quick at the end of the cutscene, you can shoot him with a sniper rifle in the head, <laughs> kill him in one shot before you fight him. And his wheelchair explodes, and the wheel <laughs> flies across the screen and it hits you in the face, and you can't avoid it. It's fucking brilliant. Man. That is brilliant, and I bet the, that is done on fight, purpose as well. The fight itself, you can do it. You can do it with a sniper rifle, or you can find out where he is, <laughs> sneak up on him, hold him up, get him to run away, and then follow his footsteps with your infrared goggles. You can you can fight him like 50 different ways it's just brilliant it's perfect boss fight right? I didn't you realize you sold that. Metal Gear Solid to me you're the first person ever to sell Metal Gear Solid to me I want to play so- I want to make his wheelchair explode <laughs> yeah Look I mean, it up on YouTube. It's really funny. There's so many. There's so many Easter eggs, man. In it. It, I mean, I'm a, I'm a fanboy, so I can't really I can't really sell it. But I love it. I love everything about Metal Gear Solid. I love all of the games. They're also. I mean, the end of two. The end of two. It's not a boss fight, but it is so crazy. It's it. it Close your mind. It, yeah, it's like you. Th- I'll, I'll, I'm going to spoil it for you, but. Don't care. Um, I might as well not bother playing it then. At the end, you know, you know, but there's a whole the, no. There's definitely worth playing still. At the end, you basically, it's game over, but it's not, and you have to keep playing like in the game over screen. And then, then the guy that's been talking to you all, the colonel that's been talking to you all the way through, he comes on your your uh, on your com link and starts telling you. Like some isn't random it? shit. Absolutely random. Like it's, it's it's an AI basically, and it's like the fuck? it tells you to, it tells you to turn it off. Game. When you go you go you go up some stairs. There's a certain point when it triggers, and you go up some stairs, and he, he rings you and goes, "You've been playing this game for far too long. Don't you think you should turn it off now and do something else?" Yeah, yeah. And then and then and then he'll start being like, "You go, oh, I was driving home last night, and I saw a strange light in the sky. Do you believe in UFOs?" And then, it just, and, then he, and then he'll bring you up and just go, I need scissors, 61. Yeah, and that, like literally by the end of by the end of Metal Gear Solid 2, I had no idea what was going on. I'd lost the plot entirely. I didn't have a clue what, if he, if, if Jack was real, if he was called Jack, if, I, I, I didn't know if his girlfriend, if he actually had a girlfriend or, or what the fucking just. If the whole game was just a VR <laughs> mission, did it, any of it even yeah, happen? Yeah, exactly. Apart from, the, apart from the fight on top of the, um, in New York, which you know is real because you're there at the end. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, that... the game could be a VR mission for you because you wake up in Arsenal, ten- Arsenal Gear, 
And yeah. it's like, have you been in a VR machine this whole time? Because you don't know, do you? No, and th- nothing's explained. So but it weird. is uh, But it, it does form part of the Metal Gear universe still, and th- I'm sure there's lots of there's people, again, better than you or I, that have analysed it and written articles about it out there. But it's, the story is, is interesting, at the same time as the gameplay being brilliant, I think. Anyway, stop bumming Metal Gear. Stop Metal Gear Please. On to On to my <laughs> favourite boss, probably of all time, is back onto Metal Gear. <laughs> and I'm going to be quick with this one unless me and Sam spooge Please a little do. bit um, it is the Metal Gear Ray versus Metal Gear um, oh, yes. uh, Rex, uh, Rex. In, in Metal Gear Solid 4 because the whole level you basically you go in Metal Gear Solid 4 again this is a big spoiler for anyone who hasn't played it but it's about 5 years old now so play it um, you you end up Back at Shadow Moses Island, which is the first game, and it's a, like it's a HD version of Shadow Moses Island. It's amazing, and you, you're going through it. And it's really, really quite ambient, and and the music's really, um, it's it's quite soft all the way through it, um, and it it's kind of like it feels like it's drawing you somewhere. That's the only way I can describe that level. It feels like it's drawing you to that final battle, and that final battle on it, you get in the Metal Gear that you've been fighting for the entire series, you get in the Metal Gear Rex from the very first one, and you fight the new one, which is in, and you fight, and it's only, it's not a great fight, don't get me wrong, it's not a particularly well mechanic, it's not very, not great mechanics, but... The spectacle though. The spectacle and the fanboyness of it, that just the whole oh my god, I can't wow. believe this is happening! I'm feeling yeah. waves of fanboyness coming from Oh my lord! I've got little. I'm just thinking about it, and I've got, I've got, <laughs> I've got goose pimples. It's amazing. It is amazing. As a fanboy, though, it's not brilliant as a as a fight. I don't think. I mean, Sam, what do you think? Do you think? Did you? It's it's okay. It's, it's, it's just really. It's just really. It's just really good fun. It's just like you are just like ah, big robots. Oh it's just, that's not yeah, bad that's, for me. It's, it's not the big it's, robots it's, thing. It's the fact that I'm in Metal Gear and I've just been well, through yeah, Shadow Moses. And you're solid. <laughs> solid refers to Solid Snake, by the way. Well, that, solid refers the to what you are right now, mate. <laughs> I am absolutely <laughs> rock hard. This is another point I wanted to talk about as well, which is something that Metal Gear does, but it's not the only game that does this. When a boss fight is not only um, difficult and challenging, but emotionally resonant like, with you. Like, when you kill the boss, you feel like... The, the boss can feel sad or it can feel epic or you can be angry at the boss like when it makes you feel something for a character that you've come to detest or love or whatever and then you have to fight them and it is an emotionally charged fight Metal Gear is also very good at that for it's last boss battles do you not you're think always um, in, you're invested in the fight not just for the fight's sake but for the emotion of the what's going on in the story now I didn't com- I didn't complete this game but talking about emotional fights um, I played a lot of them um, Shadow of the Colossus Mm. Now that, yes. that that's, that's emotional. A good segue into that. It's emotional for very different reasons, though, because you're not attached to the bosses that you're fighting. It's emotional because you don't really know why you're fighting them. Mm. Oh, do you? Hang on, do you? No, no you, I've, I've, I've not played you, the game. You find out I, at the end. Right, yeah, right. I've, I've heard that it's basically it makes you feel bad for them. Yeah, because it makes all, you question why you're doing it. They're all lumbering giants, and they're not attacking you or anything. You know, they can stamp on you and that, but that's about the worst it gets, isn't it? And the whole challenge is... Some of them do attack you, but basically they're, more, they're pretty much just large creatures that walk around, and you turn up and kill them. Yeah. And it makes it very clear that what you're doing is bad. Like, when you kill the first one, you're, um, it sort of falls down, and all the colour goes out of it. And then these really evil black tendrils fly out and hit you, and every time you kill a boss, you get more um, like distorted and dark and colourless. Oh. Each of all these tendrils hit you. By the end of the game, you, your character's nearly in black and white, and you I, look depraved, and you look evil, and you're just getting worse and worse the more you do this. But there's nothing else in that game, is there? It is just boss fights. There are apparently some Easter eggs, like you can hit some certain lizards and get your health back, and you can apparently you can climb. There's the big there's the big cathedral that you're in at the start of the game. Apparently, you can climb to the top of that if you're really, really good. Right. Um, but amazing. basically, it's just 16 boss battles. Yeah, you probably love that. There's just 16 <laughs> boss battles. You, you you ride across this barren landscape and feel weird and yeah. lonely. And then you get there, and your horse is your only friend. And you use and you fight these massive creatures, and you've got to climb on them and stab them in these weak points. And you feel bad for doing it, but you have to keep going and find out what's going on. And some of them, again, just from a pure spectacle point of view, are truly amazing. 
even today, like you play the HD version, which you can download. Well, I know you can download it on the PlayStation Network. I don't know if it's been multi-platform. Um, um, we we haven't got it on PC yet. Um, no, that's I why think, I haven't played it. I don't think the 360's got it either, or anything else. Yeah, I think it's I know just... PS3 is it not PS2? Well, that team two. were basically Sony exclusive, so I'm guessing they still are. I don't know. It's Team Ico, I think they're called. Yeah, I've not actually played the original game Ico, but I, bit, do, I do want to play it at some point. Um, Steve's got a few more. Yeah, go on, Steve. Yeah, um, <laughs> not so much because uh, the battle itself was anything fantastic, but um, did you ever, ever did you ever play Painkiller? Yeah. Never completed it. I played a bit of it though. I think I have many well, years you've ago. Fight, you've got though. a stick on you. Yeah, fire. quite noticeable because you fire out like seven foot fence posts. <laughs> yeah. nice. no, I haven't played that. And it, like <laughs> pins That's enemies good. to walls. <laughs> but um, that actually brings me on to an interesting annoyance about um, boss fights. But when you come with, uh, to fight the first one, uh, I've got it written down. I can't remember his name. I'll star. Um, you're fighting. Uh, these monks that come at you with axes and there's hordes and hordes of them um, but they're all regular size and you go in this room and it's stocked with every possible weapon imaginable oh, yeah. so much ammo that you know you could fuel the Middle East for the next 50 years um, and you just Topical? think oh, let me see. <laughs> um, then you walk out and then this big lumbering 100 foot kind of Frankenstein's monster thing comes along and starts trying to stamp on you and you fire but just I know that um Urgzan kind of had that similar feel but this kind of felt a bit more real. Right. Um it was a lot darker. Um and all the bosses in painkiller were a similar sort of vein. Like the main one at the end was called the Necro Giant. Was kind of like this big dark knight. Uh, again, huge, hundreds of feet tall. It was actually quite imposing because instead of being quite far away on the like of of the horizon and you're firing range weapons at him, he, that you walked out and he was right above you, so you could get you got a real sense of the size of scale. And he he, he was trying to stamp on you. He just pound, 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 and it was actually quite a a frantic battle. Um, it was rewarding at the end, which was probably one of the reasons why I remember it so well, just because it. It, it was that frantic and kind of got your adrenaline pumping whereas uh, th the game at that point kind of got a little bit samey so it was like a welcome change of pace I think I missed this entirely you know I'm looking at him now and yeah. didn't play it I mean it wasn't a fantastic game but graphically it was quite good for the time and yeah, it the was. stick gun kind of made it really it had a really popular uh, multiplayer as well it almost came yeah. it got to a resurgence of Quake style twitchy uh, first person shooter stuff yeah it was professionally played for a while. I think for one season of the uh, CPL or something, it was the the kind of the main game. Right, interesting. I have heard of it. I, I just don't think I played it at all. Looking back at it now, it was. Uh, <coughs> I, I at the time, it was one of the only kind of newish uh, first-person shooters that my PC could actually handle. <laughs> I was, like flailing everywhere. Hmm. Um, but no, I, I, I do remember. I've I've got really fond memories of that. Um, Another one that I want to mention, just uh, for anecdotal reasons, is uh, one of the uh, the reoccurring bosses in the Suikoden series, who was uh, an ancient vampire. He was turned to a vampire by one of the runes in the game many, many, many hundreds of years ago. But he's a vampire, and he's called Necklord. <laughs> <laughs> and I just think that, that on its own is just the best name for a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Lord of Necks! It's like calling a snowman Frosty. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, good. And good. Um, actually, while I'm on RPGs as well, I might as well uh, mention the obvious uh, Lavos uh, from Chrono Trigger. Is he the last? Never played it. He's. Have you never played Chrono Trigger? I've, I've, right, it's on my list of SNES games to get, and I haven't managed I haven't it yet. I replayed it a couple of years ago on the uh, on the DS. Because it is. You know what? You know why I haven't got it actually? Because it's not. You can't get a, a European release of it. It's only American NTSC or Japanese PAL. Because I was looking it up, I was I was looking up um, Secrets of Mana and that. I you got, can get it on I iOS, I think. Can you? Yeah, I think you get it on Android as well. I think but it's the... been released by Square. I think it's about ten quid or something, but uh. you can get it on your mobile now. Have you got a Game Boy? Oh, God, no, no, no. My mum and my dad both broke both of my Game Boys. I was because all their games are region free anyway. But right. uh, yeah, fun. Basically, um, it's a big 
huge demon thing that's as old as time itself. Whenever he reads his ugly head, cast down huge destruction over the earth and basically three teenagers destroy it in the future. Of course. After the end of time. Well, she was. Sorry, that was a spoiler, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't watch the show if you like, if you don't want spoilers. Sorry, guys. It's going to be hard not to call spoilers when we're Especi- talking about bosses. Especially and bosses, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, um, I'm going to have a go. Yeah? And I'm going to say... <sighs> I'm going to say one that I, I I was infinitely frustrated with, basically because the game was telling me to do something that that I, I that wasn't right. Oh, did you read it this time? Oh no no no! It was it was it was it was, it was two little um, two little controller sticks. It was on the uh, uh, I know on what the 360, about. and it told you to push them in a certain direction. And when you pushed it in that direction. It didn't fucking work, and you had to push it in another direction or slightly skewed off the direct off it. And it was the the, the Star Destroyer on uh, the Force Unleashed. Yeah, if you've played yeah. that. I, now, I personally liked the first Force Unleashed game. I know it got a lot of bad press, and so did the other ones. But I liked it because it, I was I was at a lightsaber and I could run around chopping people up. Loved Any it. game that gives you an achievement for killing a hundred Wookies <laughs> can't be a bad game. <laughs> But honestly, that that final final um, Star Destroyer thing again. If if you haven't played it and you do care, I'm just about to spoil the ending for you. Right at the end, you you have to bring a Star Destroyer down from the the galaxy from the from the from space rather, not the galaxy <laughs> from the from space with the Force, and you're pulling it down like that. And it's a really it's quite a cool moment because you've just done a few cool other things and you've you have to fight off Tie Fighters while you're doing this. But, it's very cinematic, isn't it? Yeah, very cinematic. And and it's like, oh my god, what? I have to pull a Star Destroyer out of what the f- what really? Is that I, 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 when that happened? I was like, I've seen the Force do like local stuff, you know, like next to you. Oh, I'm I'm picking up a, an air wing out of a swamp, you know. But it's about it's about the limit I've seen. This of it. is the force unleashed, though. Oh, it's unleashed, yes, unleashed, <laughs> unleashed. But anyway, I told you to push them like left or right or something, and you had to you had to get a sweet spot basically. But it told you to, and and I tried it again and again and again, and I was like, what the f-? and I did try doing other positions, but you have to. There be is so- no try, only do. Yeah, exactly. That's why you <laughs> fail. That was it. That was the problem. <laughs> Out, both of you, out. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, eventually I, I looked it up online because I was so frustrated with it. And because the thing is, it wouldn't. I, I think when you do it, you if you move in the 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 if you move in them around, it goes red when you're not in the right place, and then it goes green when you're in the right place. So that's the frustrating thing: the fact that it was so broken that it was telling me to do anyway. The, the 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 fight itself, you know, I was just pulling this sh- this ship down from there. It was really cool, really cinematic. I can't imagine how that would end well if you pull a oh, yeah, space station into your face. It you, you try to destroy the, you try to make it crash, aren't you? Isn't that the point? Yeah, but crash yeah, yeah. into you. Yeah, you see. Oh no, no, because it, it, it's pull... far enough. It's quite oh, far right. away. It's not like it's going to crash into your face. It's, it's in space, <laughs> of course. It's quite yeah, far you, away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's got, you're, not, you're not you're not pulling it right. You're not going like right. Come to me, and then it's like bang. You're sort of pulling it down in front of you. So All right, it, I get you. Yeah. I believe that's what you do, right? You try to crash yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. You're, you're crashing it into. Um, I can't remember what the place is, but you're crashing it into the ground in front of you. But you do obviously it comes towards you, it slides, and you have to run off and yeah, etc. Yeah. etc. I mean, there's a few there's a few fights in that game. Um, I'm not sure if it's the first or the second one, but there's that you have to fight. Uh, what's the? Uh, it could be the Sarlacc pit. I can't remember. There's there's a, there's like a worm thing that's right in the middle, and that's another really frustrating, difficult fight. You have to time everything perfectly, type thing, and but. It isn't broken, at least. Um, how, how do you kill a sarlacc then? Because I it's, presume it's just a big hole in sand with some it, teeth. It might not be a sarlacc. It might be. A, again, I didn't look. I couldn't find anything online about this. It could be even a completely different game that I'm talking about. But <laughs> like, like maybe Gears of War or something like that. But it's that kind of thing. It's that kind of like. It's an uh, some organic wormy thing with loads of tentacles that's slamming down on the floor in front of you every time. The only problem I had with the, that particular fight is that you you had a limited movement space, and where you think you could walk, you couldn't. You know, there was an invisible wall, and that kind of thing really put, like, annoys me when I'm playing boss fights because it's like I can see there's some space there. Move to the left, stuck against a wall, get smacked on the head with a big tentacle, as you do, you know. Speaking about uh, worms, what about the uh, the rift worm from Gears of War Two? 
Rift I've played Gears of War 2. Uh, would you class it as a boss? Because it's like more like a level in itself. But basically, it's this huge worm that's going under the ground and hollowing out the ground underneath so the city's caving. And that this thing is that big that basically you spend a whole level going through its guts and destroying its oh, four hearts. Yeah, I do remember that now, yeah. I, I mean, I'm a big fan of the Gears of War series. Uh, I've played all of them, and again, I, I followed it more for the cinematic experience than the gameplay, although I did like the gameplay. Sam has another opinion on that. We've talked about this a number of times. So I again, try, tried playing it more than once as well and couldn't, couldn't get into it. I really I took to Gears of War. Yeah, I only played the first one. Multiplayer is very good, and it if is. we if we can if we can get it on the PC, I think you might be able to get one now on the PC. Yeah, you can. It's the worth, one you can get. It's worth getting just to just to kick the crap out of each other on because it's it is a lot of fun. I mean, if, um, I'm just playing four v four. I've had so many good nights on the three sixty playing that. Mm. I used to play every like Wednesday with a, a group of about ten other blokes from round yeah. here, and yeah, loved it. Brilliant. You want to get naked? We didn't, oh, no. We did, we did that afterwards. Um, on, on Gears of War, one of, my, uh, one of the things on my list is the Leviathan, um, which is in Gears of War 2, and it's the... If you remember, you're kind of on a swamp or on a river, and oh, you're on this... Oh, is this the Emulsion Leviathan? I uh, can't remember if you're in the Emulsion oh, or not. <laughs> is there a Gloss Leviathan? <laughs> <laughs> Matt. Right, yes. Um... Yeah, the end of this Leviathan thing, it's like a, it's like a big, a huge um, fish giant. thing. Yeah, a giant fish thing. And and you're on this this really crap boat. You're on like a a boat with no sides, and it's just like a bit of wood in the floor. It's a raft. But it's Chris. not a raft. It's it's much bigger than a raft. I think it's called a raft actually. I, I think it's it class it's a pontoon. It's got an actual name in the game. It's like the river raft or river boat. I can't remember. It's just something specific. But anyway, you're on this thing, and obviously this this fish attacks you and it's 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 like eating away at it as you as you're attacking it and killing it and you i can't remember how you do the fight but i do remember that being a particularly difficult one in the gears of war series and again gears of war is another one that has a lot of boss fights in it it's got hard boss fights as well hard and yeah. it, it's it's someone, a, someone uh, at the start um at the start of the stream mentioned ram the end yeah boss i was uh, talking about war. that ram on my first playthrough of gears of war one was easy um first attempt no problem Every single subsequent time I've tried to defeat him, it's been an absolute nightmare. Did you have he it on easy? No, no, I played on. <laughs> I, I always play games on normal when I first play them through. Um, but he has that um, that cloud of oh, what they call the krill or krill or whatever it is, and <laughs> little flying. Oh god! Yeah. Basically, the, the things from um, Pitch Black, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. If if you go in the dark, they'll come and they'll rape you. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> 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 well, they do. <laughs> Um, but the second time I played through, the tactic that I used the first time just would not work, and it's never worked again since. Which was basically to run right past him to the mounted gun and just aim at his head and just unleash fury on him. That never, that that has never maybe, worked since. Have you ever thought maybe they patched it? Maybe that was that was a bug. Possibly. Because I've seen that happen before in games. I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, but where the boss fight. Oh, actually, I can. Borderlands Two a lot. Have they? Isn't that on there? Yeah, lots of bosses there. Uh, exploits were found in the patch them. On Deus Ex, uh, Human Revolution, the boss fights on that are particularly crap anyway. The terror, <laughs> uh, the, the, it was proper slated for its boss fights when it came out. Um, and they redid them, but they didn't do anything good to them, really. They just made them a little bit harder. And it's like, oh, what? I mean, the, the, the crap. That. Well, I was just going to say, probably the same as you, the issue with the fact that boss fights exist in Deus Ex is that it's a stealth game mostly, and yes. you don't want to be running around shooting people. I mean, you can, you've got that option, but there's, the, the game doesn't reward you for being a, an action hero, you know, it rewards you for being stealthy and discovering and exploring. But the original Deus Ex had, a, I thought, a pretty good final boss, and it wasn't a boss in a sense, it was a, a, like a, basically a moral choice that you had to make. Yeah. on a giant level and you basically had to do boss like things to get to that ending did you ever complete the original Sam? No. I've completed all of them but I can't I, I remember the end of 2 and I remember the end of 2 being you had to but there was like a central spoilers. AI yeah, yeah. Uh. spoilers basically you got this guy stuck in a like a, 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 a jar basically and he's trying to transcend or he's trying to join with the, 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 the main AI and you've basically got to decide who you're going to side with, which of the factions in the game. And each faction has has wants you to do a different thing. 
but it's all on the same level and they're all shouting at you to do this and do <laughs> that, do this and do that and you've got to make the choice in the end. It's really interesting because it's, it's, it's not a puzzle and it's not a battle, it's kind of a... It's a, a moral choice, like you yeah, said. Yeah, it's, it's a moral choice that, that requires you to do certain things. And as you're doing, yeah. as you're ticking off the list of things that you're doing, the others will start getting really agitated. Like, what are you doing? You really should be doing this. It's really nicely done, really nicely I've, paced. I remember kind of dwelling on that for, like, at the time, quite a while. I just didn't know what decision to make. Not, not, yeah, a, not a boss fight, though, that, unfortunately, guys. It kind uh, of is. <laughs> it's, it's an ending, which is another show subject. Game mm. endings, because I, I mean, I was going to yeah. go. I was going to go into the end of Deus, um, Deus Ex: Human Revolution, which is infinitely worse of that, and the end of uh, Mass Effect Three, which is a big. Well, okay, we'll, we'll hang on to that. I, yeah. I, I kind of feel like it almost is a boss fight. You're not fighting someone, though, are you? Is, or, or doing a puzzle you've, that's like the that you have fighting, to do for the end of it. He's got. He's got. You're fighting yourself. Levels. Yeah, you're fighting your own morals. <laughs> Battle with Very him. zen. Yeah. Um, right, anyone else got uh, any any other bosses I want to quickly talk about? I'm trying to think of bad ones and they're all they're all escaping me. There's one what? I can think of, but I don't think any of you guys will have played the game. Maybe Chris, you might have played the first one. You're familiar with the game Prototype? Where yeah, you're, yeah. Uh, um, so in the first game, you play as this guy, Alex Mercer. Now, I'm obviously going to spoil the end of that game. He has this sort of secret uh, weaponized virus released on him and Basically, he dies, and the, you play the game as the virus, which has taken over his body. <laughs> so it's got some of his memories, and, the, and you don't find this out until near the end of the game. I was going to say, is that why he's such a game. dick all the way through it? Well, this is the interesting thing. He is a dick, but then you find out that Alex Mercer released the virus to human, and then the virus took over his body, and you've been playing as that, and you walk, you know, you run around skyscrapers, and you get all these crazy shape-shifting powers. And at the end of the game, you end up saving New York City from a nuclear bomb. And there's, there's like a nice little twist that this inhuman virus was actually more human than the human Alex Mercer ever was. Because he, even though you've done a lot of horrible things in the game, you end up saving the city and defeating the conspiracy sort okay. of thing. Is, is there a boss fight involved? It's the second game I'm talking about, but I have to tell you about the first one first. You basically fight right. Alex Mercer in the second game as a different guy. Yeah, yeah. So you've they built up this character to be quite interested in it. And in the second game, he's just bad guy. He's just a bad guy because they thought it'd be cool to make you fight him. Mm -hmm. And you fight him at the end. And also, he's nowhere near as powerful as you made him in the first game. But then in the first game, you're approaching like god levels of power. When you fight him in the second game, he's just another bad guy that you fight a bit. And it's really, really disappointing. But if you've not played the game, you wouldn't know. But it's one of those things where you're like, it should have been this epic confrontation between two creatures that are like not of this world and have got all these crazy powers. And it just wasn't. Hmm. Let yeah. down. Um, I said, yeah, I did play the first one, but I didn't play enough of it. I, I, I felt the controls were a little bit too loose for my liking. They are a bit loosey goosey, yeah. Um, I want to quickly mention, just I don't know why that sparked my memory. Um, the original Prince of Persia. Now I, I consider this a boss fight, but hang on, hang oh, on. Original is in the, the very original, original. The original as in the two D, yeah, yeah. I haven't played that one. Again, it was another. It was another moment, and I'm going to consider it a boss fight, even though it might not be. Um, a moment in the game where I, f I had to think more than you would normally for the normal platformer mechanics in it, and it was when you met the uh, the dark version of yourself. If you remember it, um, what I've, was it I've called? I've not really played it. Uh, let me. I've got it here somewhere. Can't remember his name. Uh, it was like the Dark Knight. Oh dear, it's not the Dark Knight. That's to something totally different. <laughs> However, uh, speak speaking of the Dark Knight, flesh wounds. <laughs> there is a number of fights in the Dark Knight games that I would like to talk about in a minute. Um, anyway, basically, the way you ha you you you, uh, you went into a room, you saw uh, a silhouette of yourself, which was just black, and you both draw draw your swords to start fighting each other, and everything you do, he does, and you, you, it, as as a kid. I had no idea how to get past him because every time I, I fought, he chinked my sword and I was like, I can't I can't walk past him because he stabs me. Uh, what do I do? You just have to sheath your sword and go past him. And I thought that was a good little... I know it's it, I know it's been done and done and done and done and done now, that kind of thing, but that was the first time I came across it. And and it was a boss kind of thing in the game. I, I really quite that, like that. That sounds a lot better than one of the ones I'm going to pick as a bad one that you just reminded me of. No, that, you I, I said that was a good your, one. Sorry. Yeah, I'm saying I'm going to make it into a bad one when you do that in <laughs> a of time. 
when you fight that other link in the water temple. Oh god. It's water, just like water as well. You've just you've just been through an entire level of fucking water. That that right, I know we did this last week, but that is one of the worst levels ever made, that water temple. I fucking hated it. It was disgusting. Shit level design. It it, it was uh, oh. it's confusing as fuck. It wasn't just a confusing bit, it was like, oh right, okay, so do I have to lower or raise the water now? Oh, oh I've lowered it, oh shit, I have to go all the way around the level again from the very beginning and start the entire fucking game again, just because I've lowered the level and, oh god, yeah. Yeah, that, um, that, that one is, is kind of like what you said, was actually really quite a good way of doing it, in that you had to think and be like, ah, put my sword away. That's not how it works in Zelda, you just got to like, not Z-target him, and if you've got Din's fire, use that. Hey, that's it's rubbish, man. It's really rubbish. And I thought it'd be so cool because it looks you like wow, it's like you know a bad you know mirror version of Link. This should be awesome. And it just is crap. <laughs> you basically just hit swords together until one of you sort of gets past the hitbox of the other, luckily, and hits <laughs> them. And if you just got quite a lot of health, and you win. Or if you use Din's fire on him, you will kill him. It's Doesn't rubbish. he use Din's fire on you though when you do that? No, it can't do that. It oh. can only hit you with the sword. Ah, okay. I can't remember. I've, I've again played through it once, and I'm never ever going to play that water temple ever again. <sighs> I'm going to go through some uh, some retro games that I distinctly remember now. Um, particularly, this is another one of the fights that I, I remember doing, and it's the end of Mega Man Two, uh, Mega Man One. Sorry, the very final boss, uh, Yellow Devil. I don't. I wish I could show you a, a video of it, but basically, it started off with this yellow dude on the right hand side of the screen. You enter the screen, you start shooting at him, and nothing happens, and you're like, what "The fuck!" Then all of a sudden, he'll start kind of pieces of him will start flying across the screen and re kind of regenerating on the other side of the screen. So he's running, and you have to jump exactly right. I mean, it's there's not much room. It's like a 480 screen, isn't it, on the the old NES get NES. Probably less than that. Probably less, yeah. But anyway, you didn't have much room to do it, and you had to jump and move in the air to try to avoid these things. One hit and you're dead. Um, and you, you hit the... Uh, uh, he forms there, and that's all he does. He just... And then he... He, he doesn't do, move or do anything else. He just then does the same thing the other way, and then the same way, same thing the other way again and again. And it's just the same pattern that you have to memorise to get past him. And, and it uh, to me, again... It's a bit lazy that kind of design. It's and it's really difficult and really, really frustrating. I can't even remember how you damage him. I'll be honest with you. I, I just remember him doing this, shooting across the screen. Um, it just that reminds me in a weird way of one of the, my worst ones. And Steve has probably a similar experience with this. But do you remember the end boss of Morrowind, Dagothor? Oh, yeah. I do. Yeah. Basically, well, you're, you're, in in you, yeah, you're in a giant lava cavern, uh, and there's this this guy with a mask on dancing around on a bridge. Uh, and basically, you run up and you hit him, and it does nothing. But the effects still happen. I think it was, was it you, Steve, that you had a weapon which had like uh, insane paralyze on it or something, and you hit him, and he just went down and just stayed on his knees. Yeah, it was was some crescent moon sword or something yeah. like that. But it, but it's like you couldn't kill him. The, the way to do it actually was you had to have a, you had to follow the quest and press like open a valve underneath the bridge or something like that. Uh but it didn't give you any hints of that unless you've been following the story. And, and but you had to story, follow the story to enable to story, do it, yeah. The story wasn't that great, I don't think, in... Um, yeah, the first time I encountered him, I'd done that, and then just basically had to leave and go back to playing the game. But yeah, I just spent about 30 minutes beating the crap out of this, this guy dancing around in a mask. And he would he would take... looks like he was taking damage, and he would, he would go down on one knee and stuff like that, but you just couldn't kill him. And it was just cheap. It's like, all oh, right, I've got to open a valve to kill him. Because that's I'm, uh, his heart. I'm currently showing that yellow devil thing, by the way, over my face, and I think it was Sam's face oh, yeah. a minute ago. Literally, uh. this is the fight. That, and then he opens his eye, you shoot him once, and then he does it again. And you have oh, to do yeah, that yeah. over and over and over. It looks easy. This guy's making it look easy, but no, it wasn't. I guess oh, no, you not. have to remember the pattern for that. Yeah. yeah. And, and oh. look at how he's moving around in the air as well, so some of them are yeah. more difficult than others. And it's the same pattern every time, I believe. But anyway, it I fires hit... a bullet at you as well. That's a bit of a tricky one. Files a what? It fires a bullet at you at the end as well, out of his eye. Oh, I didn't see that. Anyway, that's him dead. But yeah, but, it, it um, was really annoying. I think to be fair, the Bethesda games, you know, the Elder Scrolls, Fallout, 
not 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 for boss battles really are they any of them really not no, it's for yeah, the they're exploration. Exactly, they're not fuller, but none of the boss battles are particularly good that I remember, really. The yeah. for, the they did try with Skyrim. The, 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 um, the end bosses, boss, bosses, I guess it's one boss, isn't it, at the end of, uh, when you go to the, the kind of, the Svalgard, I think it is. The, 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 Alduin. The, uh, yeah, you are fighting Alduin. Another, you? another the, dragon that you just said were really crap earlier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you, you've, got, you've got some some guys helping you, and that, that you've got the heroes, haven't you? The, the, uh, it's still oh, the yeah, same. you do, don't you, yeah. It's basically the same. And you've got fog as well, which always helps. <laughs> but none of them are that. None of them have got very strong bosses in any of those games. I've not played Morrowind, but um, Oblivion's last boss was a bit crap. I can't even remember Oblivion's last. Fallout last Three's one. boss was a, wasn't even a boss. It's just stuff. That's a yeah. That was a. It's just, it's just the guy who's just like, oh, you've come this far, and now I'm gonna have to kill you. And you're just like, no, shit with a shotgun, and he explodes. And you're like, <laughs> well, you were hard, weren't you? <laughs> Um, one other, what, another boss as well. That's actually I, I really like, but at the same time, it, it's one of them. I can't decide if it's good or bad. Uh, it's the end boss of FTL. Have you ever played FTL enough to get to the end boss? Because it's very difficult. I said I cheated on FTL. I used a save editor because it's just ridiculously hard as a rogue like. What type of game is FTL? I, I know of that type F of one. FTL, yeah, it's space fast, roguelike, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's called Fast Than Light. It is a space roguelike, and what and it, and it's basically a Starship Enterprise um, simulator in a two D basis. You have to have, well, you you can have people manned in different stations, so you can have someone in the engineering room, someone in the cockpit, someone in the med bay type stuff, and they. Can you do a Patrick Stewart voice like when you play the <laughs> if game? You want, engage. If you really want. Engage. Yeah, engage. Um. um. And, uh, yeah, so the end boss is after you've literally scavenged your way through about 12, un uh, 12 systems, each system is, like, randomly generated, and you have to get to the end of the system but via some kind of, like, line graph, you know, it's just like a, a, like a map connecting dots. But there's loads of dots, and there's this rogue fleet, um, rebel fleet chasing you as well, so you can't go back on yourself too much. You have to be careful about where you go. Every time you jump... You use health. Uh, you use um, fuel as well, and you have to try and gather the right, amount, um, the right amount of fuel. You have to collect scrap to spend it on better weapons and crew members and stuff. It's 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 um, unless you get a really good run and it's luck. It's really 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 difficult to to play. Anyway, the end boss. You start in a galaxy like you do with all the other galaxies. Um, you have to get to the end boss before he gets to your like command ship or something like that. That in itself is a challenge because there's also there's pirates and stuff attacking you as you're doing it. It's like what happens is you go to another, you, you do a jump and then it then you have a battle or you have an event of some sort. So it's it's quite static. You don't move the ship yourself. You just click on things and move it around. Anyway, um, the last boss is it's this huge, biggest ship in the game. It's a massive thing and it's got loads of guns that are just constantly firing at you. You're dead in seconds basically. There's no, I mean, unless you've got really good shields and you've got exactly the right spec on your ship. You can't kill him. When you do finally, uh, bearing in mind that I've cheated here, but when you do finally get past that, the next ship is the same ship, but kind of cut down quite a lot because you've you've taken off half the hull. Then it does it again on the third ship, and it's just drones are like AI inside the ship that's controlling things. Um, you can also like suffocate people as well in the in ships by taking out the oxygen and stuff. It's really it's really really cool and elaborate. I really like the game, but. Um, the final boss is like I, I haven't completed it even with cheating. It's that hard. It's it's like it's like the final boss. I've got onto the third section of the final boss and I just got nailed because it, it's like he doesn't have all the same weapons as he used to, but the weapons that he does have are miles better than you know. He's only got maybe got two weapons, but they're miles better than anything you've got, and it, it's just impossible. But it's it's another one of those that is that fun, you know? Is that a is is that amount of challenge fun? See, I guess it's I a don't difficult like balance. Kind of oh. Oh, sorry. Go on, Sam. Go on, you go first. <laughs> no, I was just going to say that it just depends on the, the difficulty. It's like, it, yeah. <laughs> if it challenges you, then great. But if it, it kicks your ass constantly, then it's not great. I said I I played it so much that I was getting so frustrated with the game in general that I wanted to see what happened at the end, and I didn't want to keep like forcing myself on it. You know, I didn't want to keep, I didn't want to waste more time on it. Basically. And I had to cheat I, um, to get to the end. 
it, as it, the, the, the way you describe it there sounds like it could be quite frustrating, although I guess the idea is that you feel like you've overcome something at the end and you go, wow, I defeated the odds by defeating that enemy. But it is quite annoying. In a game particularly like Devil May Cry, if you played the first one. No, I, when, I'm not keen on them, to be honest. Well, basically, they, they, the whole point of the game is that they make Dante look like this is really ridiculously overpowered badass cool dude and I say cool dude he's he's kind of what some probably like you know slightly over the hill Japanese game designer thinks Americans think he's a cool dude it's a bit <laughs> of a prick. he's basically a knob like a complete <laughs> douche he sort of goes hey Hi, babe walks around, with a, walks around in a red leather coat with his six pack out shooting guns with a big sword he's a knob but basically, <laughs> he's Duke, Duke Nukem with the sword, in, basically. In, yeah, in the cutscenes, he's like super invincible. Everyone's shooting him, stabbing him. He's like, whatever. And then you go and get in a boss fight. Two hits and you die. And the boss has got a health bar the full size of the screen. And you're like, chip, chip, chip. And you're like, <laughs> where's the badass that was in the cutscenes? Who's this guy I'm now playing with? Why can't I do what he did in the cutscene? That takes, That's probably a separate issue, I suppose. That but, takes us neatly on to um, bosses in, well, in fact, not just bosses, but pre-bosses in um, games like Metal... Uh, not Metal... Metal Gear Solid is just... Awesome. I can't talk about, Metal, talk Gear about Metal Gear Solid anymore. <laughs> um, uh, games this, like... Uh, this episode, we do it next episode. Games like Mortal Kombat. The original Mortal yeah. Kombat, for example, getting to Shang Tsung was hard Shang enough because you had to fight Goro first. Then when you got to Shang Tsung, you're like, thank God that fight is over. Oh my God, he turns into everybody. And he, he turns into the guy that you've just fought. It's like, oh, yeah, and, and his expl- health I mean, bar they, is they ridiculous. Do, they do explain that by saying that he steals the souls of everyone who gets defeated. So it, it did. There is a plot point to it. It isn't just a case of like a lot of old arcade games where you'd kill, you get all the way through the arcade game, then the last level would be every boss that you've fought in the arcade game. Yeah, to so that point. again. <laughs> yeah, and and that's the thing that the the. They've just, imp- I don't know, I don't know if they've improved that with the Metal, uh, with, oh my god, with the Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat games. I don't know if they've, they've improved that as they went on because I kind of stopped at Mortal Kombat 3, I think. I might have tried another one a, a while back. I, I think it's all just about fatalities now, isn't it? Everything yeah. I've seen of the, mo- the most recent Mortal Kombat is basically how many different ways you can tear someone in half yeah, with a that- hat. My favourite one was that. In fact, the the uh, Lu not Lu Kang. It's not Shang Tang. Uh, Shao Shao Kahn. Shao Kahn. It? That's it. Yeah, is where he yeah. cuts you in half with. No, his that's not Shao Kahn. No, that's not Shao Kahn. Uh, Shao Kahn's the guy who's like you. Raiden. Will die. Is it Raiden? No, it's the. Uh, the it's not Lu Kang. God damn it. Anyway. Kung Lao. Kung Lao. Kung, Kung Lao. Lao. Kung Lao. Well done. The hat. The hat. Yeah, then he throws it on the floor, then grabs hold of someone by yes. the legs and yanks them through a <laughs> scrot first. Actually, didn't Shao Kahn something from the Jungle Book? No, that's Mowgli. That's, <laughs> that's Shere Khan. Shere Khan. Khan. <laughs> Sha- Shao Kahn's the big overlord guy who you yeah. fight in Mortal Kombat 2, two and 3. Ah, oh, yeah, he's in yeah, 3 yeah. as well, I think yeah. he's in 3, yeah. I think he's on all of them after that, probably. But, I mean, at games like that in I general, advice. though, if you, if you take even the um, uh, M. Bison, for example, in Street Fighter 2... He, he was just really hard to fight because you had to be perfect with your timing and your placement and your jumps and your, and it, your hits. He was a cheater. His moves felt like they were cheating on you I think well. he used he everybody else's moves, though. I think that's how he played, I think. When you uh, no, he had his own, he had his, he's got his own move set, but it just feels very cheaty. Like, a lot of his moves overpower yours. You know when there's like that? If you get your hitting at the right time before theirs, you, you win mm-hmm. that sort of hit-off, I guess you call it. He just seems to just negate that rule, and all his attacks just hit you, whether you want him to or not. It just it seems like he was a bit of a cheaty boss. Yeah, he's got a large a like, lot of hit, in... hit circle or whatever you call yeah, them. Yeah, hit box. There's hit a box, lot of those something. in fighting games. Anyone played the Tekken games at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tekken Five, I think, it was on the oh, PS2. I that far. You fight. Um, I don't know what he's called. He's basically Hi Hachi's great grandfather. He's Something Jin Jin Patchy. Hi 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 Hachi. Hi 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 hi. I think he's I think he's called Jin Patchy. Basically, he's a really old bloke with a big silly hairdo like Hi Hachi with red eyes and he's all evil. But he's got so many unblockable moves that you have to like do this dodgy sidestep to get around. Like he's got these big power beams that just go like wah at the screen and you just it's so cheap and you just like it's one of those boss fights where you win by luck. You go I just jumped out of the way. Luckily, enough times and hit him in the face enough times that I won. You didn't feel like you you beaten him. You felt like you survived. I hate that shit. I mean, the uh, at the first um, the um, 
Well, the beat 'em up genre itself kind of took a bit of a nosedive after the 16 bit market, really, didn't it? That was kind of when it was at its mm. peak. Well, to me, it did, but has it for everybody? I mean, well, I think a, it did for a long time, yeah. Yeah, there's only a couple of ones that I can remember that were any good, for example, even for the PlayStation. Um, Second and Soul Calibur was I was going to say, Soul Calibur was a. It's still quite a. Got a big following behind it. Yeah, but that's all fanboys. I mean, the game itself hasn't really changed much. No, Soul uh, Calibur 2. Many really of them have, though, have they, really? I mean, I quite like um, Battle, Battle Arena Toshin Den. One and I remember two. when you, uh, we got that on the demo CD, and we used to, well, well, there was only two characters available, wasn't there? There was, yeah. Was well, that, there was, go on, Sam. Is that the PlayStation 1? Battle yeah. Arena. yeah. I had that yeah, It was one of the <laughs> release games, I think, or very early uh, PlayStation Yeah, there games. was that guy who had the massive claws. Yeah. And another person. Um, <laughs> A woman, yeah, probably. I, yeah, well, I think it was, um, yeah, I think it was Sophia, the Russian... Bondage woman with a whip. I don't think it was. I just realised. Right, I might um, making that up. For those people who are watching the, um, uh, watching on the bid the dog channel, go on to forward slash resonance arcade because everyone's talking in both channels and they're not in the same. <laughs> no one's talking in the same one. So we've got Moot in in resonance arcade and. Um, a few other people in in my channel. Anyway, have we had any questions or any comments or anything? No, we've had a few comments. Um, Chris and Sam should dress up as Snake. I'm happy with that. I've already you should do one half, and he should do yeah. the other. Yeah, I'll, I'll dress up as Meryl. Can we do the voice the whole way through? Just be like, Colonel, <clears throat> what's going on? Or I'll be. Um, to do that. I'll be the DARPA chief. <laughs> <laughs> He's black, by the way. The DARPA chief. <laughs> Just like yeah. you. I got yeah, that. Exactly. That's my point. <laughs> Yeah, I know Sam got it. Sorry, that was a bit of an in in joke. Um, <clears throat> and Moot has also said MGS should be banned, which uh, means that which I'm I probably agree with. I am going to time Moot out for that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very much. See you later, Moot. I would imagine with fifty percent of people well. in this podcast being huge Metal Gear Solid fans, that's just not going to happen. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I feel like I've got to play it now because just so I can. Get in on a conversation. Have you got? A, I need to, have you also, got a spare I need to feel like I need to months. play it so that I don't get it spoiled by me. Yeah. Well, that, well, you, you've already had a lot spoiled. Well, no, have, the thing yeah. is, there's so much in it. You'll forget by the time you get you forget, to the point. Forget, yeah. 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 I was only um, joking, Moot. I'm sorry. I didn't mean. To, I was only messing. You know what I'm like with kicking. Just, <clears> just because uh, I, I know time is getting on here, but one of the other things that um, is, is led on from what we've just been talking about is the idea of cheap bosses. Now there's uh, there's there's some really really good bosses in the Borderlands series, um, especially Borderlands Two, but there's also bosses which are, are made to be raid bosses, which means you need four players to to kill them, right. and you need four really tooled out players generally, um, and they've been some absolutely great bosses in some cases, but absolutely awful and cheap in other in other cases. There's um there's a boss. Um, in one of the add-ons, the the uh, the pirate uh, it's Captain Scarlet's boot, pirate booty add-on called Master G, and basically you can't damage him. What you've got to do is um, you, there's these beetle things that spawn around him, and you've got to kill them, and they die and form pools of acid, and you've got to lure him through these pools of acid and get him to stand in them. They're still attacking you, beating the shit out of you, until the acid drains all of his health. Right. And it just takes forever. So you can't do, inflict any direct damage on him. You just got to lead him around, walking him through pools of acid. But the pools of acid will kill you, and if you don't <coughs> periodically clean the level <coughs> by releasing some some water into it, I think it is, then then you all end up dying. They're just you just all stood in a big pool of acid, and nice. you die a lot quicker than he does. Mm. It's so cheap. It's like just let me shoot him. I don't want to make him stand in some piss. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, on the on the, the subject of cheap bosses, I've I've got one here that um, I found inf infuriating the first time I, I I fought him. But you have to fight him three times in the game, and it's the um, uh, the the what's he's called the yeah the imprisoned in Zelda Skyward Sword. Now I'll tell you how it works. You start off and you you it's, you, it's right early on in the game you. This this guy comes from another realm, and it's a big cat. I can't even know what he is. He looks like a big pine cone, it's a big furball <clears> with <throat> teeth. Yeah, but he big starts off furball. starts off, and he starts walking up this like circular, like um, column. Like it, it's it's dug into the ground, but he's walking up this column thing. 
<clears throat> and, he, and you have to stop him before he gets to the top and gets to the temple and destroys the temple or whatever he's going to do to it. Um, and you do it pretty easily the first time round, and then they they do it again and they do it again but all they do is they add like extra little bits that you need to chop off on him like his toes like uh, that and his uh, and his fingers and that's and that's pine it cones. and he, he just gets a bit faster and it's just like it, it was a shit boss the first time don't don't make me yeah, do it three times so, yeah and then if you think the problem is as well with that is if you fall off when you're near the top you can't get up to the top because Link's pretty slow in those games. He doesn't have any speed boots like he does in the uh, Link's. Um, they can use the um, the sail, can you? And use the <coughs> air column. But it still takes a while stuff. to get up it though. Does. By that, and, and I mean, I I quite liked that game. Again, it got quite a lot of bad press. Um, I quite enjoyed it. I thought the the sword control was pretty cool. I'll be honest with you, but yeah. that boss can I don't know disappear for all, disappear for all I care. <clears throat> uh, Moot has just mentioned in the chat God of War. I haven't played God of War, but I've heard good things about it. Have any of you what guys played it? Bosses? Yeah, I've yeah, played, three of them. I played one, two, and three. I've played. I haven't played what was the fourth one, Ascension. Because unfortunately, with the God of War series, the only one from a plot point that actually makes sense is the first one. The, the sequels are just like, and then Kratos killed some more shit. And it's like, <laughs> that's fun. That is fun. And he's good but at it. it the, yeah, he's very good at it. The first one had a, a really good contained story. So it didn't kind of need a sequel, but because the gameplay was so much fun, ah, the sequels are good. Um, yeah, the, the talk about the, you talk about that boss from Serious Sav, who's the biggest thing ever. Yeah, it, I was I was going to say he isn't the size of Kronos, the Titan from God of oh, War. That, is, that the, is that the one? Is that the one you got to no, climb no. up him? Uxan's like bigger fighting, than him. You're, you're essentially fighting a mountain, man. It's like ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ugzan's bigger than that. I think. Ugzan's pretty big. He's 500 feet tall. Roughly. I reckon we should get uh, a picture by picture comparison. Just we need a, we need an infographic, don't we? <laughs> There's a little <laughs> scale model of a man and then a. Oh. No, the, the Titans in God of War are fucking You're right, Chris. I remember this fight. Sorry, I remember that. I remember fighting him. I've played God of War 1. I've got all three of them. I've got the HD remakes, but I haven't opened it yet. In God um, of War Do the HD three, remakes have uh, better tits in them? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. God of War 3 is when you really fight the Titans, though, and they're really massive. I can't, Can fight, fight? can't find a good screenshot of Kronos. I think it, I'm sure it's Kronos that you fight. Maybe it is. No, it is. He's I huge. I think I He's have massive. seen it. Yeah. I, I think I saw the video for it where you're basically <laughs> climbing around on this massive. You sort of running on his arm, and then you have Man. to fight bad guys when you're on his arm, and then he moves his arm, and you're like, Ugh. it's it's pretty. He um, might he might epic. be a bit bigger. He might be a bit bigger. Not not loads, but. Because he's, he's uh, one of the pictures I've seen now, he's, at least. he's holding a person in his <laughs> hand like that. So yeah. I think uh, he's probably a bit bigger than Ugzan, but Ugzan's pretty huge. But no, I remember playing the, bo uh, the boss battles on uh, on that, and I did like, uh, as Moot has just said, they're, they're quite clever in God of War. They're not, they're not just hit him and hit him or climb up him and stab him in the eye all the time. You know, it's, it, there's a bit more to but, it than that. But there is also a lot of hitting. They are tactical, but they're also proper fight fights. Like, you have to hit... Slap the shit out of all the bosses, but there's tactics to them as well. QTEs. I like that. QTEs. Well, there are a lot of QTEs in God of War. <laughs> Honestly, what is the point in QTEs? It's, it's like validation for, for God, people it, who it, shit at games. In God they did it on the Mega CD and it didn't work then either. <laughs> in God of War, they sometimes about. make sense because a lot of them are button mashing QTEs. So you grab something <gasps> and you bash circle to rip it in half. So it feels like you're sort of. Yeah, and you you, ah, it, you, yeah, it feels like it's it, you sort of unleashing the rage, as it were. Do you know what I mean? As, as Kratos, some of them are obviously just X circle, X circle, avoid this, that, and the other. There's, um, I I don't mind QTEs. That people really hate them. I really don't mind them at all. Heaven, I, have I, a, I see what the big problem with it. It's just all it is is testing your reactions. There's nothing wrong with that. The game, I, I have, loads of games do that all the time anyway. I have a special um, problem with QTEs. It only really affects me. I, I play games left-handed on, on a keyboard. Uh, and in most modern games, they don't allow you to rebind the keys that actually <laughs> control the QTEs. So I'm playing on the cursors, and somebody uh, says, yeah, press E! Yeah. <laughs> so I've got to press a key on the other side of the keyboard, by which time I've been stabbed through the face. You, you probably have that a lot of the time. Anyway, I used to have well, problems I when I used to strafe with my mouse buttons. I used to, I, Some games, I couldn't bind them. They just wouldn't let me. So I'd have to... WASD it all the time, yeah. um, but um, QTEs. Uh, one of the worst games I came across for QTEs was um, Heavenly Sword, and that's like a God of War ripoff. I was actually yeah. just about to mention Heavenly Sword. Um, I don't remember any boss fights in that because I hated. There the wasn't game so boss much. fights, but there was kind of uh, I, there was wars. 
like you built up and got so far, then you had like a massive epic battle which you had to like defend a town against a oh, really? advancing army. Because you could fire. Um, I because it was one of the first games that I played that used the uh, six-axis motion of the uh, of, of the joypad. Yeah, so you it, fired. It was well, the first uh, one that I played. Yeah. Uh, but when you fired like I don't know, um, like a trebuchet or something, you can actually slow down and like, control the path of the projectile by t by um, like tilting the joypad in a certain direction, and that was massively different at the time. Yeah. Wasn't the story in those, that game quite good though? It was as well as well as um, um, the lip sync and that they've done on mm -hmm. the game itself was fantastic. It's probably the best I've ever seen on a game, even by today's standards. Should we do an episode on lip sync? <laughs> <laughs> Is it Alain Noir? It, we'll have to, we'd have to have some videos playing at that time. I mean, because <laughs> yeah. there's, there's a, a number of consoles. Uh, consoles seem to suffer more than PCs for me for this, but lip sync, it, it always goes out on consoles, especially if you pause things in the middle of a, a cutscene quite often. Um, I had that on my, my 360 and I, I'm getting on my PS4 as well. Weird. <laughs> anyway, digress. Um, we have probably got about 10 minutes left. Um, I'm going to go through a couple more retro ones that you guys may or may not have played. Um, Mike Tyson in Mike Tyson's Punch Out. He is uh, the boss of that game. I hear a lot about him online, and I've said they do, they do him on um, in uh, Awesome Games Done Quick. Basically, from what I can figure out, if he hits you once, you die, don't mm -hmm. you? Um, I think it might be one, like one, and you've got a tiny bit of health. Basically, two hits, yeah. I think, or is it one? I think, he, I think he one hits you. It's a bit insta jibs you with his fist. Basically, yeah, it's 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 a fight you have to be perfect at. I never did it. I never complete. I got to it, but I never completed it. Um, but yeah, that I mean, it was it was again. It's a classic boss fight that most people of our age probably you know if they've at least been near a Nintendo maybe have played at some point. I think. If, um They've done a new version of Punch Out for the Wii U. It's not Mike Tyson's Punch Out anymore, so I don't think he's in it. But <laughs> he's um, also retired. He <laughs> years, one too many years. <laughs> well, this is a It's a shooting game. You can have whoever they want in it. I just think it's the whole sort of. Well, he's just kind of a convicted rapist. Probably don't want to put him in Nintendo <laughs> games anymore. <laughs> you know, that, yeah. it's fine. Um, but it, it looks like it's. I've seen gameplay of it, and it looks like it's a very faithful recreation of that style, but updated to today's. Mm. I've you know, seen graphics I've seen and it. stuff like that. It looks actually quite cool. They've done the same with Flashback as well recently. Uh, there's a new, I, I downloaded the demo, but I haven't played it. But again, going off on a tangent there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, we, yeah. we need a retro remix episode, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. One more boss battle that I want to mention because I found it very, very clever um, was the Scarecrow in Batman Arkham Asylum. Because yeah, you don't was... you don't fight him directly. But it builds up for quite a while before you get. To. Have you guys played Arkham Asylum? No. I would highly recommend it because it's got such good fighting mechanics in it. I mean, you feel like Batman. It really is really good, and you can get like it dead Batman cheap on the Steam. Time. Oh yeah, good point, good point. But um, no, not just that. I like I like the whole thing. It's loads of gadgets, loads of different ways to do levels, and um... it's got it's got the voice actors from the '90s cartoon as well, like Mark Hamill as the Joker. And that that really helps a lot. It really makes it. One. Yeah, and and as I said, the the fighting mechanics are the best fighting mechanics I think you'll ever come across. Everything feels like it connects, and when you uh, when you like you, when you're doing a fight, you can build up loads of awesome combos. You know, like you know, like you used to do in um, Killer Instinct, where it used to be like a million hit combo by yeah. the end of it. That kind of thing, you can keep keep it going forever. But you can start using your tools as you start getting them, so you can like throw a batarang and then fire a, a hook into someone's face and pull them towards you and uppercut them and then do a backflip and break someone's neck and uh, well you don't break necks but you know it, yeah. Batman doesn't kill off. I know he doesn't he doesn't he, Everyone, he, breaks, he breaks bones just not spines but it's really it's really <laughs> even even on uh, easy yeah. even on the easy setting where it gives you all the prompts and it tells you when you're going to get attacked so you can counter and stuff it's even difficult with that on but on hard it's almost I mean I'd say it's almost impossible unless you get really good at it but Scarecrow is not that kind of boss at no, all because you don't fight him like sorry, that. Sorry, <laughs> again, I went off on a tangent then. But Scarecrow isn't. Scarecrow is. Um, you get poisoned at one point with his with his his laughing gas or whatever it is. His fear, sleep, fear gas. Fear gas. Makes you afraid. But you don't know straight away, and then the game, the rooms start changing, and then you go into one room and then come out of that room, and then it's totally different, and then you basically the Scarecrow is kind of watching over you 
He's a huge giant. He's like a giant, and he's 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 huge watching. Giant. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up with my advert. I can. We need a better superlative. Pro pronouns. We need better pronouns. Do you know what that reminds me of? When we did a brief Futurama when um, I think Bender ends up really big and Professor Father is like, we need an even equally big monster. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's, he's this huge monster and he basically is looking around at you and um, his eyes, wherever his eyes are seeing, is like light and you have to avoid that. But you have to get to the end of it. And then what happens at the end, Sam? Do you remember? Um, yeah, you basically he his he looks at you and his eyes are like light, so you've got to hide from the light, and you sort of stealth your way through the level, and then you get onto him and you shine the bat signal on him, and that sort of breaks the, the spell as it were, and then you wake up. But it's right, it's really yeah. clever how it does it, how it takes you into that. It's that it manipulates the world in a really cool way, and, and that. you have to do it a few times as well, and it gets more difficult each time. Like you, you get subjected to the fear toxin a few times, and each time is more difficult than the last. It's yeah, it's cool. It's uh, good. Yeah. The, um, the, also, the um, Mr. Freeze boss from Arkham City was very good because each time you use a certain way, say you're just like, say you, you glide at him from above and hit him, he goes right and he freezes all the points where you can glide. So you have to use a new tactic each time you hurt him. That's so you have cool. to use all your gadgets and all your skills to win that fight, and that's really cool as well. I would say if there's any games that I would recommend that we've talked about, and this is even over Metal Gear Solid. I'd go for the Batman game. The, uh, Batman Arkham Asylum is brilliant. It, it really is a good yeah. game. I have yeah, a lot City, about it. Arkham City is great as well. Arkham City is even better in my opinion. I, less, I less think focused, the, yeah. but, but brilliant. It is very, 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 very good. Don't get me wrong, but I think I've got a... Because, again, the original Arkham uh, Asylum was the first one that did it. I, I don't know. I think I've got a bit of a better, better place in my heart for it. What's uh, Arkham Origins like then? Sam's it's played that, I haven't yet. So I've got that free on my graphics card and I haven't played it yet. It's worth it's worth a go, but I, it's not as good as the first two. It's a different studio, and there's a few things in it. Well, I there's a few things in it that bugged me because there were things that seemed I couldn't do that I could do in the previous two games and mm. some limitations that it seemed to put on you, but it also had a lot of ambitions. I don't know. It's interesting, but I would definitely say don't play that before playing Arkham no, Asylum. No. Oh, I can say play Arkham Asylum because it is it sets the it sets that Batman world up quite well. Yes, uh, it's and like their own sort of take on Batman. There's hardly anything that's annoying in that game as well. I would say in Arkham City, there's a few more annoying boss fights in my opinion. There's again, there's some great boss fights that are just fights as well. Um, you know, you fight all of the DC, all of the DC universe people. Yeah, you know. the Rose Gallery. Yeah. Um, Right, so any other games, any bosses that you guys want to talk about before we sign off, or are you all good? Um, I guess one I'd mention, last of all, um, is not really one boss fight, but a game full of boss fights, and it's probably not a game that many people have played. Um, have any of you played Contra the Hardcore, or Probotector as it was in the, Probe sector. the, the UK? Basically, um, have you played any of the Contra games? No, unfortunately not, no. Um, they're, they're really popular in America, um, but basically, uh, Contra the Hardcore, the, the entire game, pretty much, I'd say 80-90% of the game, is boss fights, and they're all different, and they're all really impressive, and they're all, they all have their own sets, uh, they're, they're all kind of scenes, um, and they're all, they all have a different tactic to them, and it's just, it's a joy to play. It's very hard, it's one of the hardest games I've played, but it's just constant interesting boss fights and it's not all 2d it's like there's bosses which are chasing you out of the screen and it's just uh, look up some videos of it or something it is very very good i've had contra recommended to me numerous times and it's one of those uh, of all of the contra games that's one that's probably the best one which one it's called Contra the Hardcore. Right, so it's not the first one or anything like that it's... no it's no it's some <clears throat> mid midway i think the first one came out in the UK as Gryzo or something like that. It wasn't even called Contra. From what you're describing it as, it sounds very different to the Contra games that I've seen. Yeah. It's, it's, a, games, it's a side-scrolling, run and shoot a million yeah, soldiers. It is, Whereas if yeah. Whereas this is mainly boss battles, it sounds very different. It starts off exactly like that. So you, you start off and you basically you, you run and right killing a million soldiers, but then quickly what you realise is it's, it's just lots of boss fights with, with little punctuations of, of killing lots of soldiers. But that's that's kind of the minority of the game. The majority of the game is going to the next cutscene and the next boss fight, and it's they're, they're all really interesting. It's like someone has just got loads of great boss fight ideas and put them into one game. 
Cool. Sounds really worth checking I, out. I, again, I've had loads of people tell me to give it a go, so maybe I should. I do like my retros. Um, one other thing I want to quickly mention before we, we sign off, unless you guys have got any other get, uh, bosses you want to talk about, is is that trope, that boss fight trope of the flashing red. You know, when you start, it's one thing we haven't mentioned, and I thought someone would have brought it up. I mentioned it earlier on. Oh, well, yeah, there's a flashing red. There's the, <laughs> there's the big shiny, like glassy looking Wait. thing that you've got to shoot. Yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. there's the, um, there's a bit, uh, it's, oh, there's one game in particular, I can't remember what it is now. It's relatively modern, probably early 2000s, but I've seen this on a load of games where you have to fight some big mechanized unit, and it throws everything at you, and then it has to go through a cooldown. In order to cool down, it opens all its vents up and yeah. oh, uh, like, exposes yeah. all its uh, delicate... Wolfenstein does that, doesn't it? Isn't uh, it Wolfenstein's uh, one of the recent one that does it, but there's uh, loads games of other games that do, games do that. Um, well, one that springs to mind is um, Vanquish. That yeah, Vanquish. Uh, that's got, actually, the first boss fight. You, you have the boss fight, a first boss fight in Vanquish within about five minutes of the game opening, and it's a fucking humongous robot with... With missiles Hits. flying out of it and fucking everything, it's ridiculous. I I quite like that game though. Again, I've I mentioned it I before, like but it's just fun action. There's nothing really cerebral about the game. But the, for fuck's sake, you've got rockets on your ass, and you you can slide <laughs> like rocket slide along, uh, along the floor. You just hold a button, and you just go. <laughs> And then Fucking you go and shoot stuff in slow motion, like, oh, yeah. like she's sliding <laughs> on your ass. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> and you could do backflips as well, and do like backflip kicks and stuff in like people's faces. It's just, it's a good good fun bit of good fun, I think. Yeah. Right. So. I think we covered pretty much every boss there. Haven't we? Every, every boss ever. ever. I've got another five hundred on my list. To be fair, <laughs> but um, I'm just going to have a so quick many. look to see if there's Are any. The open Metal Gear Solid. There is, there's one other Metal Gear Solid one on there, and that is one of my worst fights I didn't, ever. Dude, I didn't want you to say that. I wanted, I'm, I'm what just, I asked was... <laughs> I'm just going to say this, because uh, I'm, uh, just just to end it on a good note, I want to talk about another Metal, uh, Metal Gear Solid <laughs> 3, right? Volgin. You fight Volgin in that. And I've had, again, I've had this discussion with Sam before now. It... I've never, I've never actually finished and completed Gol Volgin because I entered so you've, the fight. You've never got to the fight with the boss, have you? At the end, I need to oh, play it all again. I, I'm a Metal Gear Solid fan, and I haven't completed Metal Gear Solid Three, which is arguably one of the best Metal Gear Solid games out there. Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid, <laughs> Metal Gear Solid, <laughs> Metal, <laughs> Metal Gear Solid. Say <laughs> different ways. Gear. Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, yes, I'm, I'm going to stop it there because I can go on forever. I've got loads of games, uh, loads I of bosses will. to talk about. But um, yeah, so everyone who has watched, thank you very much. Thanks for the uh, participation in the chat. Uh, hopefully next week we're going to be more professional again. Yeah, might not be. Like, probably not going to be. Probably going to stress out. Shit, uh, we might meet up like at about three hours before we uh, we start the stream, so I can get my shit together next time. But we'll, yeah, uh, I'll just finish work. Actually, I'm off work next week, so. Oh, yeah. sorted then. Sorted. I might have work next week, so I, I might not be here for it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thanks a lot to everyone. Uh, I'm gonna do a bit, bit of quick pimpage. Um, obviously, I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, I am a indie game developer as well, and I'm developing my own game called Subnet, and it is a, sta a, a stealth hacking and parkour game. Uh, my studio is 19 Stone Ninjas. I think we've got our Twitter handles above our heads. We do. Um, or, yeah, above everyone's Some of heads. us do. Some of us. People who use Twitter. Um, get on Twitter and follow us if you're, if you're interested in game development or anything like that, because I do a lot of streaming and I do a lot of uh, uh, chatting to people on Twitter. Probably more than I should. Um, apart from that, I also do another show on Thursdays, tomorrow, uh, at 1 o'clock. It's called The Data Mine. Uh, a company called MMO Buff run it, and it's... Um, it's all about the anal analytical voice of gaming. It's just basically the data mine specifically is about developers and kind of supporting other indie developers, and uh, it's quite get, can get quite deep and technical. This week we're talking about sound and how to get it into your game and what you should and shouldn't do and uh, etc. So yeah, check us out on uh, on MMO Buff, which is on all of the all of the social medias. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to pimp, and I totally forgot what it was now. The game subnet. Done that, oh, like you? like uh, eight yeah. times. Uh, yeah, so that's me, Lou. Um, yeah, I'm also an indie game developer. As I said earlier on, I'm developing a game which neither you nor your children nor your grandchildren will ever see. 
Um, because <laughs> it's just taken so long to do. It will You've come out. You've restarted it about six times, though, haven't you? I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. will come out. I'm developing a game called um, Archaos, which is a remake of a Julian Gollop game called Chaos Battle of the Wizards from 1985. Julian Gollop's the guy who did um, the original XCOM, and he's also working on his own remake of the same game um, <laughs> called Chaos Reborn. Um, yeah, uh, you can. F my website is uh, rotates.org, um, and my Twitter handle, as you can see above, Lucy32. Um, and I'm also um, a moderator in the HTML5 game dev community. Um, I'm working on a few things for that at the moment as well, which is uh, quite fun. And that's me. Yeah, I still can't remember what my other thing was. Don't matter. Go on, stay in, Sam, if you want to. Uh... You need to get some hobbies, don't you? I've got plenty I, of hobbies. I've got, you know, I've got... <laughs> Just nothing really gaming that related that I can any, bring up. Yeah, it's nothing to do with being computer games, so I don't talk about it anymore. I got, I got a town on Thursday nights if you want to meet up with me. <laughs> right, I, I don't, I'll, by I'll, the way. I'll pick my band. I'm in a band in Newcastle called Raising Ghosts. Check us out on YouTube and Facebook and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, go for that, definitely. Um, I'm not going to pimp anything. Good. Except I'm yourself. Myself. <laughs> Um, yeah, so thanks a lot, guys. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll have stuff up on YouTube and have some edits. And hopefully, as I said, next week we will be a lot more, uh, a lot more professional. Are we gonna, um, are we gonna try and decide on the the next topic now while we're on live? Um, if you want, uh, in fact, let's try and engage the audience. If yeah, the audience yeah, uh, have got any ideas, we have a, a vast number of topics that we want to talk about. Um, has anyone got the document open? Because uh, I'm just will. opening. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, discussion documents. Here we go. All right. So, so we've got about uh, maybe about thirty wow. or forty here. Um, we've got things like indie games. Uh, these are like so what what we were going to do originally is we were going to have each week we'd ask everybody like what's your three worst and your three best of whatever the subject is. However, I think naturally it's just it, it it's a bit one well, it's a bit restrictive that and two we can't always come up with three or even one of our favorites like today for example I I couldn't really pick a worst boss fight probably a best I could but not my worst you know um, anyway so go on Lou read some of them out if you got it open um, well I was going to say there's also something that was mentioned in the very first show there was a few ideas um, one of them was why are games so bad compared to yesterday. Am I too old? Is the market target of teenagers and have drifted away from it? That was suggested by um, Clarky, um, which is an interesting one because the, what do we think to that? Uh, are games bad compared to the, what they used to be? Uh, that's that's an open the, debate. The, exactly, yeah. Um, another one was about indie, de and indie development in the job market. I think maybe that's a bit specialist for, considering only two of us are indie developers and only one of them <laughs> has, has got anything meaningful released at the moment. Um, but some of the some of the other ones that we came up with are um, characters from games, favorite characters, worst characters, game weapons, which I quite like. I really I, like game I, weapons. I could talk I like about game weapons forever. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, we've we've got uh, cutscenes, quotes. Um, we've got gaming tropes, which we tend to cover in the stuff that we talk about anyway. I think. Yeah, most of the time. Um, consoles was mentioned on both our list and in the um, the chat. Mm. Um, We've got multiplayer. We have um, sound effects. One of the ones that was brought up early on as well was sex and nudity in games. Seems mm. like a bit of a serious topic. Yeah, um, I mean, we could we could talk about it. But I think we could do that. It's one of those things. What do we do? Do we bring up games that have sex and nudity into them, and and, and then I don't know, debate whether or not it's necessary, or does I it think we need lots of boob jokes in there if we're going to do that. Yeah. I think. I'm yeah. trying to think if there's uh, enough content there you know for, for it yeah, I think uh, there's, there's quite, quite a lot, lot of games content. these days that um, that touch on the kind of R rated, X rated type of area when I mean, even exactly. Wolfenstein um, when she's reading the diary she's talking about uh, her relations with the Nazis and the sex that she's had and rape and stuff so well, let, let's not forget there's a scene where she's basically having yeah. sex with him on a train yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> spoilers I haven't got that far yet <laughs> <laughs> and, and the table in the storeroom yeah um, and, and there's other ones that we've mentioned, such as the pay-to-play, free-to-play. That's quite a 
contentious issue with all. I think we'd all like to ta tackle that one at some point. Yeah, because we keep I imagine that's going to be a bit of a ranting episode if we do talk about that. Yeah. Um, serious versus casual gaming. Um, bugs. I, I really like bugs, and that, the, 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 the thing I like about bugs is the topic of emergent gameplay. Doing yeah. things in games that you weren't meant to do. Because I feel like some of the best games ever made have been that way because of emergent gameplay. So oh, there's quite a few there. I've, I've Moot, a few. Moot has just mentioned. Uh, get, I I imagine it is also games into movies, as in movies that have been made from games and games that have been made from movies. That would be quite yeah. a good subject because there's lots of them and they're quite varied, really. Yeah, I'm going to add that one to the list. Uh, yeah, we shall add that to the list. But yeah, and also so, some uh, Mythalos said game weapons would be awesome. I think. I think we should do game cool. weapons for the next game one, weapons. Yeah. I mean, me and Lou it's are going nice, to agree on one nice of our favourites straight away. That, isn't it? it is, yeah. Yeah. It's a nice fun topic. I think some of the other ones sound like the sex one and the other ones, some of the pay to play, we're going to get a little bit serious <laughs> and or angry or whatever. Yeah. Whereas weapons is just like, oh, I love killing stuff with this. Also, as well, <laughs> while, we, while we have, while we have a, a few uh, audience members engaged, um, what do you think about possibly us? Uh, I've forgotten. Streaming games? Uh, no, no. I started Doing thinking about streaming naked. games. Doing the stream. That would that, work. Forgotten now. Man, forget it. Oh. Singing our own theme tune. <sighs> right. Anyway, Why everybody. Theme tune, then sing it. <laughs> we have next week's subject, and we're going to go. Um, we're only 12 sorry. minutes overdue today, so um, sorry about weapons. the technical issues. We'll be more professional next week, hopefully. Well, Chris will. Uh, we'll just be as professional as we always are. Yeah, all right. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Oh, great Bye. shot. <laughs>